Oh, now I hear myself. A okay. L- little lower. A little lower. Perfect. 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 No. I had the wrong button. All right. Uh, what are you going to say there real quick? We're at the start of the podcast. Just me and Danny, guys. A lot of you purists like this. And I'll tell you what's on the TV. Uh, Springsteen doing Storytellers. Uh, about 10 or 11 years ago on Showtime, and that's muted, so I might go in and out. Danny, your thoughts? Well, what you were going to start out, uh, we're about to play a theme. I'm going to introduce that, as, uh, and I'll explain why it's the most funniest thing ever. But go ahead, Dan, what were you going to say? We uh, I, I was watching, well, you said, what, yeah. what would brain matter look like? Right, right. I was watching that concussion movie about the guy who t- uh, like had his life ruined by the NFL because uh-huh. he... He uh, said that NFL is hazardous to their health. Right. It was just on. It's the Will Smith movie. Right. So. Well, I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop, stop. Sorry. Stop, 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 stop. Something. Why did you just tell me that? Huh? Why did you just tell you me that? You said what would brain matter look like? Right. What well, explain? I said it freaks me out that you mentioned that because I just watched the brain movie. Right. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, this was yeah. for off the air. Just this was not for well, on Why did you tell me that? Just say it's not. Say, say to me, okay. Art. This will be. First of all, that's terrible <laughs> off the air. Like, like I, I swear to God, you're one of the smartest people. You probably have an IQ north of 140. You really? Yeah, I bet you do. I bet you do. Which would almost be as high as me. You ever get your IQ tested? Uh, no. Really? No. Were you naked? <laughs> uh. I wonder if you could do it as an adult and have an accurate thing. I bet you have like a very high IQ. Um, well, you're, the highest your IQ is is between what eighteen and thirty. So is um, that true? I, oh yeah. What, what, Mathematicians you, lose their your brain start to go down. Yeah. See, I think I'm smarter. Well, I have more. You have more knowledge as you get older. <laughs> and as uh, uh, Faber said at Faber College in uh, Animal House, knowledge is good. <laughs> But you, you really, uh, I guess you know more, but that has nothing to do with intelligence. It's, um, you know, knowing things. But honestly, okay, 18 and 30. Did you feel smarter between 18 and 30? I mean, don't you think? No, I, I felt smarter around. T- well, you're an annoying know it all. There is nothing. 26 you, up. Plus, every I subject, know. you just yell no, out an that's opinion. That's not true. I mean, you're really, you're a know it all. That's not true. But I, you're, you're, you're likable. <laughs> yes, it is true. Everything. I'll give another example of a dungeon. Uh, it's just me and you, buddy. We're fine. Uh, it, 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 the, the fans love this. Don't you read Twitter? <laughs> Don't you read Torelli and Monica and Jason? I love our fans so much. I read the thread sometimes. I can't stop reading it. <laughs> I was reading a thread between Monica, Jason Abram. You know that kid, Jason yes. Abram? Mm-hmm. Uh, and who else was on it? Um. <laughs> See that guy or whatever he is. See that, yeah. <laughs> well, he does it from my mom, from my uncle Frankie. Uh, yeah. You know what that is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is unbelievably funny. It, when I do, you see that guy? What do you say? <laughs> okay. So one You're of our fans, off. yeah, one of our fans is at See That Guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my uncle Frank would. Well, he wouldn't understand it. Trying to Twitter, trying to explain Twitter to my uh, uncle Frank. Like, what, what, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? I don't want nobody following me. It's not they don't physically follow you. What are you talking about? Fuck you. <laughs> what are you fucking fag? Everything was a fag. Uh, what we mean going to acting? What are you doing? You're a fucking fag. Why are you fucking here? We go acting. We can do like that. Like, uh, <laughs> Robin Benjamin? You? You're a fucking fag. They're all fags, aren't they? <laughs> That's all he said. They're all fags. I don't give a shit. Even if they, you know the guys are like talking like, they're fags. Name a guy you think ain't a fig. John Wayne fig. <laughs> John Wayne's first name was Marion. <laughs> what the fuck? You change that. Uh, all your names are Marion. Fuck you. I punched my father in the face. <laughs> and then I ain't even married. Fuck you, motherfucker. Sometimes he would make a noise. He, like the answer to the question, Uncle Frank, how do you get to the job? Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. You are so stupid that you live. You go in the parkway, you know where you daddy make a letter with daddy. That's what I'm doing. What? <laughs> you make a letter with daddy. What did you just say? What do you think I said? <laughs> you want me to tell you? Yeah. You, uh, this. This is exactly what you said. Boot the bad of it. Boot the bad of it. So when you, when you get to the job, tell him you're a journeyman. <laughs> What's that mean? You're a journeyman company. You make $22 an hour. Does that mean I got to build shit? Because I don't know. Oh, you fucking jerk off. 
Just go, just go. You don't know how to move. You gotta learn how to move. <laughs> Set my uh, uncle up when my uncle was 11 years old uh, with a date. She, the, the, the girl was 12. <laughs> lived, next, lived next door to him. True story. Down the shore. Lived, lived next to Uncle Floyd. And there was a cute little girl, 12 years old. So he sends him to the boardwalk, drops him off. They, 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 and then he takes him home. Le- they leave the girl off of the, of, at the house, and he says to my 11-year-old Uncle Bruce, you fucker? Oh, God. <laughs> they were at the, at the, at the uh, uh, Seaside Heights boardwalk for an hour. <laughs> It was packed on a Saturday night. They were at the, like the falafel stand or the fucking. <laughs> did you fuck her? Did you fuck her? Michael goes, he's all embarrassed. No. Oh, what a fucking fag. <laughs> <laughs> called him a fag. <laughs> he goes, you don't know how to move. When I was your age, I was fucking everything that walked. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, did what a fag. <laughs> You didn't know what I was doing. I fucking every walk. You got to learn how to move. <laughs> what the fuck you doing with her? I gave you ten dollars. I gave you a saw buck. <laughs> he gave me a saw buck. I gave you a saw buck. That's ten dollars for you, rich, rich kids. I don't know. We got ice cream. Oh, Jesus Christ! She suckered you, man. You don't know broads. <laughs> she got an ice cream, but you get nothing. <laughs> I'm fucking embarrassed. I'm fucking embarrassed. <laughs> the father of the Mars gonna say, "Oh, your nephew fucked my girl." No. <laughs> You got nothing to worry about. <laughs> He's a fucking fruit. <laughs> you got nothing to worry about. Now, if I was 12, you'd have something to worry about. <laughs> you might have something to worry about right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, indeed. I got Penn State on. I love that Sandusky. <laughs> what a great defensive coordinator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, called him a fag. So this would have been what, late 50s for Uncle Bruce? My Uncle 12. Bruce was born in 1953, so this would be 1964. Six, okay. <laughs> Summer 64. <laughs> they just shot Kennedy. We just shot Kennedy. <laughs> yeah, we got him. <laughs> Said Taylor Trifacani. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Taylor. I know all those fucking guys. Well, we, le- we left a bunch of Irishmen in their driveways. We don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, we take them down to the reservoir and forget about them. <laughs> You know the reservoir is when you drink water at the reservoir, you drink an Irishman. <laughs> That's all it is. Why the Irish? They want to move in on the labor. <laughs> the fucking Jews, you need them. <laughs> 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 the Jews, you need Irishmen like stupid. <laughs> They're dumb the jigs. <laughs> uh, he would say something like that, and I go, Uncle Frank, I'd be with my friend Mike. I go, Uncle Frank, my friend Mike is part black. He goes, I fucking like this shit. He goes, I tell the niggas they're black. <laughs> Direct quote. <laughs> I tell the niggas they're black. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Uh, he had a diabetic poodle. His wife had a diabetic poodle. And the wife had him on the tip of her finger. And every once in a while, we go over there and be chasing the poodle with a needle. <laughs> oh, God. And I'd go, what are the chances this poodle's getting the proper insulin? <laughs> we well, had a big gut. You know, and I go, I go, go Frank, you're not going to this fucking dog, I swear to Christ. <laughs> he gets a Paris poodle. <laughs> the dog's name is Paris. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Paris. <laughs> he, he didn't know my name. He knew the dog's name. <laughs> he would call me Wooly. Hey, Wooly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Wooly? <laughs> hey, Wooly. You see Paris? <laughs> Get that dog. I got to give him the insulin. <laughs> the needle. Grab it. Yeah, grab the dog. <laughs> I set the dog up with the broad next door. He fucked her. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your faggot to Bruce. The dog fucked her. <laughs> you could fuck. I gave the dog five dollars. He fucked her. <laughs> He's fucking the dog next door like crazy. <laughs> like fucking crazy, but <laughs> yeah. I tore that Tory on the speak. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Uh, I'd call, I'd go to a job site and he, a guy would be screaming at me. Tell your fucking uncle he sent too many guys to this job. <laughs> All right? Now I got to explain. I got I to gotta pay for one extra guy, a journeyman, 22 bucks. I ain't got enough sheet rocks to keep you busy. <laughs> call your Uncle Frank right the fuck now. Take the job phone. Here. I call him and go, 
and he's the background screamer. I go, Uncle Frank, what do you want me to do? He, yeah, tell him he's, he's got me to fucking deal with. <laughs> tell him his name is Mud. Fra tell him Frankie Manto's name is Mud. <laughs> and I go, Uncle Frank, he says you're Mud or something. He goes, tell that jerk off. Who gave him a soapbox? <laughs> <laughs> tell that jerk off. I'll come down there right now. I'll kick the shit out of him. <laughs> you want me to tell him that? You did tell him. Did you find Panucci? <laughs> this is Panucci. That's Panucci yelling at you? Tell him, tell him, put him on the phone. <laughs> I'd put him on the phone. I know my Uncle Frank would do it. Put him on the phone. And he'd come back and go, listen, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I'm sorry. Why don't you go on break? Mm. <laughs> Why don't you go on break? <laughs> we were in the end of the How did anything get done? He was like the big cowboy in Casino. <laughs> well, sort of. Sort of. How did anything get done? Like, uh, we built, if I go by a building that we were building, I wouldn't go in there. That we, nothing, we, I like, even the guys who were better than me at carpentry were not that good. <laughs> Everything was not measured properly. D listen, dude, the guy showed me a picture of the bathroom you shit up. <laughs> Holy shit. I wasn't sitting there. My dad had all these, like, weird terms for, uh, uh, for tools and yeah. on the box it would say channel locks but he would have some like weird term for it yeah. and he go just take he'd call and say take the thing the thing and do this and that yeah. and i'd be looking all day for that tool he goes it's right here listen. i said it says channel locks on there listen jerk off <laughs> listen do you swim naked today <laughs> yeah. you motherfucker you gotta go to cock robin <laughs> yeah. you, you you build a house like you go to cock robin right we deed it right <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? And who's the shine, Stan? <laughs> you got one shy friend. He looks. He's like whiter than you for crazy. Uh, you got one mooly. No, the guy. The guy that worked with me at the site was named uh, Herbert Rousey. Yeah, Herbert. <laughs> the spook <laughs> Rowdy. We got one touch you and Rowdy. Indeed, it cried. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. I love the fucking black man. They move, man. They know to move. He do the time. Who gives a shit? <laughs> He loved my father, Uncle Frank, because my father stole everything. He loved them. He goes, oh, your father fucking took everything, man. Holy Christ, we stole everything. <laughs> 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 Holy shit. We, had, we, we, set, we set my cousin up uh, down the shore at a, at a stand, <laughs> uh, the milk bottle thing. We knocked the milk and full, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> we robbed everything. The kid, would, they would come. I said, "Well, fucking kid would act." And we, the fuck the milk bottles. You want your fucking that broad devil a uh, bear? <laughs> twenty dollars. Give me twenty bucks. Get a bear. Take, give me twenty dollars. Get a bear. He would. He sold everything. He sold all the prizes. And the owner of the stand would like not even break even for the. <laughs> <laughs> Those things were a gold mine. The owner of the stand would not even break even. <laughs> oh, your old man knew how to move. Your father, Mary, your father was in a hospital. He took a, he told me, Frankie, there's a scale in there. The doctor told me the scale cost $5,000. Get the truck. <laughs> he tried to back a truck up. My, <laughs> my mother stopped him. <laughs> my mother stopped him. Here was the plan. Uh, me and my father were going to tie a, a piece of co coax cable. <laughs> a, a piece of coax cable. If I'm lying, I'm dying. Around this big scale. My father overheard a doctor say it's brand new. It's a $5,000 scale. My uncle Frank called him up and said, "I got a fence to guy take it, twenty five hundred." So we were supposed to lower it down into a pickup truck, <laughs> lower it down into a pickup truck, and then drive it to Albany, where a fence was going to take it for twenty five hundred dollars. A stolen hospital scale in the back of the truck. My father in almost in a diabetic coma. <sighs> he, he, my father got into a motorcycle accident. Hardly a sportster. On his way to work, and my mother didn't know he had a uh, motorcycle. Oh, he kept God. it at his, his mother's house. Oh, man. He he didn't go to the hospital because he was afraid to tell my mother. You know my mother. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he was afraid to tell her. He came out of the shower. I come home. He, he he's getting a towel. He looked like he looked like a burn victim. I said, Dad, what the fuck happened? Mm. He goes, I fell out of the you know the most don't tell you, but I can't tell her I have a motorcycle. I go, Dad, what are you going to bleed to death? <laughs> <laughs> she came home and saw me like screaming. Mm -hmm. You've got to go to the emergency room. <laughs> uh, he had two Harley Sportsters. He got sick. He got sick when we made him disappear. <laughs> I go, who, who, who? The Sportsters. <laughs> that was one phone call. I got 80 cents on the dollar. <laughs> 
just everything was wrong. Everything he, everything my father did was uh, not right. Yeah. <laughs> you see that ladder? You just would just look this way. <laughs> okay, we stole a snowblower once. Uh, we, we, I had he goes the guy always keeps it out brand new snowblower. The guy always keeps it out by the curb. He goes, I'm gonna slowly. You're gonna go. He put me in the trunk of the car with the trunk open. Okay, the <laughs> trunk is open, and he goes. I go. What am I gonna do? He goes. The handles are out into the street. I go. Yeah. He goes. You know. He puts it out there. Then he goes in the back to do something. So the guy was home in the back, and he's gonna drive slowly past the snowblower, and I'm gonna grab the handles, and in the and we're gonna tow it, but I'm holding it in the back of the trunk. So he goes, I miss it the first two times. He's screaming at me. Oh, God. He goes, what the fuck? He's going to come back outside. I go, let's do it tomorrow. We're going back another time. Three times. The third time, I got it. But I, I, my hand slipped. I'm at one arm. I'm scraping it now because I just have one hand. Oh, left. God. He, he stops at the stop line. He straightens it out. And uh, we, we told the uh, snowboard. <laughs> oh, God. How old are you at this? 14. Oh, 14. And I got back, and I thought he was going to be proud of me because he goes, you fucking suck at this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, thanks. What if I was good at it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? I got to tell you something. It's all about funny. There's, a, there's an AA step, like the eighth step you give amends. Like you call people yes. and say you're sorry, like I'll probably do for you hopefully one day. <laughs> Dan, remember... Uh, Remember the, the decade between 2010 and... I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I already got one of those from the fat uh, piece of shit DJ, so don't worry about it. Well, oh, really? <laughs> uh, so um, uh, I was going to call the guy who stole the snowblower, but I wasn't even drinking at that point. <laughs> I just felt I owed him an apology. Oh. Because I would see him shoveling. <laughs> I would see him shoveling. And I go, we have your snowblower. Oh. We live like four blocks from him. I'm like, what if I go over there and just, what if I try to paint our snowblower like it doesn't look like his? I go, you want to borrow our snowblower? <laughs> 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 what if he notices it's his somehow? <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, I just borrowed my snowblower from him. <laughs> <laughs> your dad probably would have wanted some type of rental fee. <laughs> Get five bucks for him. Well, we had cable. We, we, my father would install illegal cable, and he would give the people our address, and they would mail us checks every month. <laughs> I swear to God. That's what he was doing when he fell. We, I, can, I told the lawyer that, and he goes, Art, that's a direct paper trail to you. Uh, Do you know the felonies? Every time the guy mails you a check. That's mail fraud, and there's no statute of limitations on mail fraud. Well, my father's dead. <laughs> I, I said, I said, Dad, why did you do that? Take a one-time fee. He goes, Well, this is you set up an empire. <laughs> I said, Listen, I, I, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> Sometimes I'd be flabbergasted. Sometimes I go, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> he had two hundred grand. God, I'm opening up on this podcast. He had two hundred grand in counterfeit money when the day I was born. Above our, uh, we had a really small apartment when I was born. Uh, really tiny, like all oh, like one bedroom, but almost a studio in uh, Orange, New Jersey, it's like a borders Newark, and um, they uh, they were you know local wise guys. Uh, I'm not, you know what I'm not gonna say the name. <laughs> I think they're, they're disbanded actually. They're disbanded. If you guys, they're the same guys. You know, you Google the, the name will pop up if you Google. There was a famous singer, Connie Francis. And the you know a really good Italian crooner, and she, she's in the paper today. Wh why? Uh, a book. There's a book written about it, and she talks about a lot of stuff. It's in well, the paper today. Well, her brother got killed by mob guys, Ooh. and uh, they found him in a driveway in Hillside, New Jersey. I think so. The Hillside of Down Neck. And um, the, the, the guys, my father was holding the money, but there was a, if you Google it, that'll be the name you'll pop okay. up who, who supposedly killed him. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, he was uh, he got involved with you know he owed money to them, and uh, you know Connie Francis was young and just she wasn't like a big star yet, uh, and uh, yeah, so they said you know hold the money and uh, we'll get it when we need you to, we need to get it you'll get a little money for holding it, and of course the FBI uh, somebody rat him to the FBI I won't say who, um, God, it's unbelievable. 
All I'll say is this. It wasn't my mother. It wasn't anybody in her family. All I'll say is this. Fucking broads. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Fucking broads. They find FBI comes in 200 G's above the goddamn, uh, goddamn fucking, uh, I'm, she's pregnant with me, my mother. Pregnant with me. Eight months. They find 200 G's above the fucking refrigerator. And uh, he gets taken in. And uh, he dummies up. And uh, as the story goes, you know, you can't get out of that life. But my old man, you know, he wasn't Ita fully Italian. And uh, I could be a made guy. He would have been working his whole life as a worker bee. And uh, my mother said to him, listen, uh, I'm taking a baby and leaving. If you don't, you, you got to tell him you're out. And he goes, well, I can't get out. They, 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 he went to them and they said, listen, you dummy up. You beat this case and nothing happens. That'll be the favor. But it's got to be clean. Don't come back, blah, 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 supposedly. That's what he told me when he was paralyzed. And uh, that's what he did. He told my mother, uh, you know, that's it, I'm out. And she started hanging antennas for a living, which is a lot of hard work. And we moved to uh, Union. And, of course, uh, he completely lied to my mother for the rest of his life. <laughs> 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 Apparently, he went back in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some side jobs. <laughs> He had a black guy who would sell him. He all the drivers for the cable company would sell him their shit because you need to for the well, early uh, cable you needed to like put at what they called F connectors on the cable and you needed to strip them with these special things that owned by suburban cable company. Right, right. I could put an F connector on in eight seconds. My glory. <laughs> uh, and uh, he would buy all that equipment because he needed it because he had a very active illegal business going on. <laughs> Uh, he had stickers that said cable TV put on the side of the van. It had to be, they had to be straight. They had to be straight, too. I said, Dad, we have no time for this. He's, put, he's got a level out <laughs> with the sticker. Drive you crazy. So one of the drivers who we started, you know, buying stolen goods from was uh, Harold, black guy. And uh, he would call from prison every once in a while because he also robbed gas stations. Uh, so he, my father would be his one phone call. And he would go, is this the kid? <laughs> you go, what? You got the son? Is the son? Yeah. It's Hal. H A L, I thought it was. H A L. Hal. Hal. Yeah. Tell you for Hal call. <laughs> He'll know where. I'm in co tell him I'm in college again. <laughs> 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 That's the first time I heard that term. I go, did he get a scholarship or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Hal. I, I said, Hal. Who's Hal? <laughs> and, uh, oh, ha Harold. It's Harold. <laughs> I go, okay. Hal call. <laughs> yeah, tell him I re I reenlist I uh, <laughs> I re uh, what, what's that word recapitulate or no re uh, whatever. So fucking funny, so fucking funny. God rest his soul, my dad. What a great man. I just I mean like you know just a guy of uh, you know a near, I mean listen a lot of obviously these aren't great stories, <laughs> but uh, to his son you know he told me a lot of wrong things like you know. That you know, uh, getting bad grades wasn't totally terrible. Against you know, how to steal a snowblower. Could you imagine that call? Listen, remember 1981? <laughs> remember, you didn't have a snowblower? Yeah, that was us. Uh, I say you do it on stage, right? <laughs> and here's your new slow boat snowblower. <laughs> Be great. I'll buy him a state of the art one, <laughs> a driving one. Yeah, why not? <laughs> that well, you listen. Well, the, well, the yards weren't big enough. <laughs> Quite frankly, it was a little. He didn't need it. I mean, you know what I mean. It was a bit a little. We only hit. Yeah, I know. A little the, pretentious. Yeah, little pretentious. Like where you living on a state? <laughs> oh, did your dad stole everything? Oh, everything. Because after my father fell, my uncle Frank would try to. Uh, what do you keep looking at? I just want to make sure we're recording. Oh. You're, you're doubtful of it? That means No, I have to always watch. Oh, I, I, really? Every two minutes. I Why? Does it go out? Yes, it stops sometimes. <sighs> That's very disconcerting. Well, thanks. Do, are you doing your job? Thank you. Sorry. Uh, let me do mine. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, my, so you try to get my Uncle Bruce to do uh, bad stuff, steal stuff. My <laughs> Uncle Bruce got, after my father fell, he became a, I, no, God, Jesus. He became born again Christian. Uh, big time. And, um, you know, he wouldn't do anything bad. And my Uncle Frank hated that. <laughs> oh, dude, what happened to that fucking Mary? <laughs> 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 I know, he didn't fuck the kid in, in 1964. <laughs> he didn't fuck the girl, and now he won't steal anything. He was really mad he wasn't doing illegal stuff. <laughs> he goes, what the fuck? He's saying little shit. <laughs> little shit? 
You want him to have people send him money as if he's a cable company? <laughs> oh, you better marry. And then he would pause. You go, your fucking father, man. Holy shit. <laughs> he took everything. <laughs> <laughs> I go, what do you mean? He goes, holy shit. <laughs> you had to batten it down the hatches, man. <laughs> we went through where we climbed everything. Everything. Every, everything said property of. <laughs> <laughs> Every, well, and that's why when, uh, that, that uh, lawyer tried to sue him. He said, we'll sue the ladder company. And I said to my mother, I'll tell him. That, uh, <laughs> The ladder said Bell Atlantic on it. <laughs> and there's a there's a Sears or Roebuck warehouse that a, a Bell Atlantic guy, I guess, was running a wire on the roof. And my father drove by and needed a new ladder and just saw the <laughs> ladder and just went up, grabbed it, and put it on his truck and left. <laughs> and I said, what about the guy? He goes, well, you got to get down. You get down <laughs> with the Sears. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I wonder what Hal's doing right now. I would love to interview Hal the Black Guy. <laughs> He's probably at college. He's probably a lifelong student at college. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, we, we needed a couple of steps fixed at the house, and my dad, I, I, he said, listen, I'll take care of it or whatever. I'll get a guy to go out there. So it's been like a year, and I keep on asking him, when, what about the guy that you're going to get? The, he goes, well, I've been trying to get a hold of Herbert Rousey, the guy I used to work with when you were a kid. I'm like, okay, great. He does good work. He goes, I haven't been able to get a hold of him for a year. Well, yeah, well that's what happens. <laughs> so. Maybe like Stephen A. Smith, he was Stephen A. Rousey. <laughs> <laughs> He's my dad was Stephen Arousey. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your dad it's Stephen Arousey. He would, he would. Uh, the second my dad would leave, he let's, let's get out of here, and we would go go over, where we'd go to Arthur Treacher's. You'd, you'd blow. <laughs> we go to Arthur Treacher's and eat lunch, and then uh, scurry back around three thirty four o'clock he, with my dad. He, oh wow! <laughs> so he would have like what fish uh, and chips, and you would have his dick. <laughs> Hey, Danny, I got your lunch. <laughs> Stephen Arousey's aroused. <laughs> oh, my God, Stephen Aroused. Dad, I've got to tell you something about Stephen Arousey. <laughs> what would your father do if he knew he made you blow him? Oh, God. Would he kill him? That would never happen. Why? We made you? No. You were a kid. No. What do you mean? What if he forced you to? Yeah, it would never happen. Uh, what would you do? You'd fight back, right? Yes. Okay. You wouldn't let it happen? No. You wouldn't put a Brian McKnight song on and let it happen? <laughs> no. <laughs> it would have been it would have been Marvin Gaye back then. Well, listen, good, good last name. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah, my Uncle Frank called him Marvin Fag, by the way. <laughs> Marvin Fag. Oh, I love that guy. <laughs> he can fucking sing that motherfucker. Ah, uh, yeah, so there you go. It was a little treat for my a little walk down memory lane. <laughs> what was your Uncle Tommy like as a young man? Uh, really smart kid. Really smart kid. I, you know, he's, uh, Uncle Frank is my grandmother's brother. So he was my great uncle, technically. And Michael, Michael Tommy is my mother's brother. And 17 years older than me. So he was still a teenager. Very into the 60s. Very affected by the 60s. And he, uh, but he's a valedictorian. So you know, the only white collar uh, guy in my family ever, really. Wow. Uh, and when my grandfather went on the GI Bill back to college and became, you know, an accountant, but you know, what the sweetest man ever. He would do people's taxes on the block for a broccoli robin egg sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> True story. But my uncle Tommy, a brilliant guy, a very intelligent family. Um, you know, even the, the carpenters and a lot of those guys are all brilliant people. Uh, very, very uh, uh, well read. And uh, is that my uncle Frank? But. <laughs> but, uh, you know, again, talking about street smarts, there was a natural, uh, he just knew how to, like you say, knew how to move. He, he went about an eighth grade education. He was the head of the Carpenters Union. <laughs> okay? He was the head of the Carpenters Local. <laughs> <laughs> and let's just say, when he made a deposit in the bank, he used a shovel. <laughs> Not a pen. The shovel was his pen. Like James Brown. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, and, and my very, uh, you know, always ball breaking from the time, like, I, I, my uncle Tom is a, I guess like me, I get that from him and my father in a much more sick way, but my uncle Tom is a grade A ball breaker. <laughs> I know. Like on a level of, you know, like the, the ball breaking meter hits red. <laughs> 
And with all my friends, that was good. He was a pop because he's the, my Uncle Tom's the kind of guy who, if you know him for ten minutes, you could goof on it. You goof on anything with him. Uh, and um, which was great. <laughs> Uh, Danny McGrath, the bad cops like that too. You could be talking about mothers within sec. All the black kids in him, they were talking about his mother. <laughs> the black kids in high school, they paid me. They would offer me money to find out Dan's mother's name because <laughs> they wanted to put it in the jokes when they played the dozens. Oh God, oh God, that they a lot of money. And eventually, I I gave it to him for like it was thirty dollars. <laughs> I gave it to a Duqua Hutchins. That was his African name, Duqua. <laughs> I believe he's dead now. And he, uh, he, and he was so pissed off that I gave him his mother's name. <laughs> you know what? You know how annoying it is that you look at that. You're looking at that every two seconds. No, I'm, I'm yeah, not. I mean, you are. Is there something else to it? No. Every two seconds. I'm know. not looking at every two seconds. I mean, you, I, it's clear you don't care what I'm saying. Oh. But th- 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 this is what you do. I catch you like this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why every two seconds? I'm not doing. Uh, you, every do it, t- you, you took after Tim too with the smartphones in the car, man. I can't take it. I can't take it. I am gonna. There's gonna be an act of violence. But then you use your phone. You 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 dial. You call people. What are you talking you, about? You do Twitter. What are you talking about? What are you talking uh, about? When you're driving, what are you talking about? Yeah, but what's the matter with you? Because you, I can't believe you. You bust me on the phone. I'm you talking about directions. Thing. Oh, big. Di- I don't grow up in New York City. Sorry. I'm telling you where to go. Whatever. What do you mean, whatever? I know where I'm going. I tell you, you're like, damn, we don't need that. Okay. All I was, all I'm looking for is traffic Why information. Why are you so mad right now? All I'm looking for is traffic Why information. Why are you so mad right now? I'm not mad. You're a fucking weirdo. <laughs> Dude, man, I, so every once in a while a buddy of yours gets pushed. Holy shit! And you're screaming at me. What else do you want from me? You, you make do, more money than me. You do. You do way more th- stuff on the phone. I'm than the I do. boss. <laughs> you do way more on the phone. No, but I'm not. I'm not a fag looking at directions. I, I don't stick it in my crotch like Tim. And like you're both every looking second. at directions. He's, he's he is texting. Yeah, right. The club yeah. owners with stuff he forgot to do before well, he left. Well, That's what he's doing. You're trying to deflect on Tim. <laughs> Believe me, I know Tim's horrible. But you, you, you have gone. You, but you become millennial. You're like, are you trying to be young with that? That no, it's not true. Every time I'm looking at, I'm like, yeah, we don't need that. All right. I like to know where I'm going. Well, I why? So I have a. What do you think's gonna happen? Well, so that you know. There is a place that I have to go to in uh, Mountainside, New Jersey, where it is on 22. It is a hour every time, and I'm trying to look what for alternatives. That, well, I'll tell you alternatives. Well, you never have. I've been t- I've been complaining for a year. Well, just tell me before you leave. I did tell you. You tell me when you get back, because you love pouting. <laughs> you look on. That's fine. <laughs> that's okay. It took 14 hours. <laughs> that you love. You love, you want me to feel guilty. <laughs> No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Because you tell me after the fact. Tell me before you go. I don't have a note written down. Tell ask Dan. I'll tell you where we're going. <laughs> Straight to Loserville. <laughs> uh, you know, d- d- I mean, d- d- you get so angry sometimes. I don't know what the fuck. And that's the real you. That's how you feel about it. <laughs> Did you hear how he just yelled? That's what he thinks of me. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. It's getting more and more to the annoying, like, you're going to blow up. Do not try to kill me when I'm sleeping. <laughs> Spent an hour and a half getting the stains out of your, your beautiful shirt there today. Well, yes, then last don't night. do it if you don't like to do it. I don't tell you to do that. I hated you. I didn't I expect- do that. You, you totally hate me. Oh, yeah, right. Dude, you hate my guts. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes, you do. <laughs> my mother and sister are the only people that like me. <laughs> You know, I know that my mother always tells me. <laughs> I love you, Art. No, but then she, she tells me every day, Dan is really, don't trust him. I know Flippin's going to. You're so mad. This is what he gets mad at. You're so mad that my, Dan bought these towels that are like really cheap. And, and, and they're so terrible. Like, I can't even like, you know, and you get, they are the blue, that blue fur ball <laughs> comes out and it's all over the place. And that means cheap. <laughs> That's a cheap towel. And I go, you got to get better towels. And it, it's so insulting to him. I can't even bring it up to him. And then my sister bought the right kind of towels. My sister bought these white towels. They're so great. They are so fantastic. And I can't, I've never mentioned it to a Dan because he would go berserk. 
you would blow up. You would blow up. I thought I got nice. Did towels. you get the towel? The, the white, the white one, Stacy got. They're poop? certainly nice. They're they're way better. <laughs> they're just. She goes. I know, because Dan gets jealous of a woman. <laughs> oh God. You want those women instincts. Uh, you know, until you get the operation, I don't know what's nice. <laughs> because are you taking hormone pills? Because you get you have that kind of man. No, but your mom wants me to take fish oil. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, get some for you too. <laughs> you should take fish like the uh, pH <laughs> fish. I, you know, I just, just please. <laughs> the, before you blow up, you got to oh. get out of here. I mean, listen, I am sorry that I'm talented. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, you know. America is grateful for it, Art. Well, no, you see, the sarcasm, <laughs> I know. Timmy saw me out, I'm talented. <laughs> Timmy Surrounding, he's got Springsteen and me. Yeah, but t- Timmy's got another vocation he can go to. Well, Timmy's got Life the- Life coach. Tim- yeah, right. <laughs> How pathetic. <laughs> Timmy's another one. I can't bring it up. I can't bring it up. You don't realize how much you have in common with Timmy. Oh, yeah. It's the same exact thing. Yeah. I'm, da- I'm tippy-toeing around. <laughs> Why do you torture yourself when you, when you, when you, you see me go out and uh, you become an artist <laughs> on stage? I, t- you know what Timmy has? He's got those. He sees the checks I get. He's so <laughs> mad at me. He thinks he's so much smarter. And he's like, I went to college. What's he doing? Just yells into a he's microphone. still going. Yells into a microphone. <laughs> and then I explain to him. I, I think he's inheriting money. I hope so. Because honestly, th- th- I mean, you know, he'd be homeless. <laughs> and I try to point out to him he's got to change life. He's got to do something. And, uh, you know, he goes, like, what? I go, well, he goes, I'm going to school. Because all he does is work for me. And he somehow pays rent. And he gets whores every once in a while. He shows me pictures of these whores. <laughs> they all look like uh, uh, Miguel Cabrera. <laughs> He's the uh, player for the Detroit Tigers. <laughs> and uh, do you notice he likes those dark like, yes. Puerto Ricans? Yes. And, uh, you know, they all got, like, Cabrera's tits. <laughs> And they have facial hair in places they're not supposed to. Right. Like their face. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of statement was that? <laughs> you mean a woman had facial hair when she wasn't supposed to? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're uh, on their face. <laughs> Some of them have, yeah, they look like uh, that, uh, <laughs> that uh, critic who died, Joel Siegel. <laughs> and they're uh, less feminine. But he's got he's got Springsteen. He's got the genius because Timmy's cousin is Springsteen, and he's got the genius of music, <laughs> and then me, the genius of comedy. And he, he looks at me disgusted. He's like, you know, you got cupcakes all over the car. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you want from me? And he goes, well, I'll be all right in life. I'm like, what are you gonna do if I stop doing stand up? He goes, I'm gonna be I'm in school. I'm like, for what? <laughs> You're 37. He's what is he? 38. Yeah. He might be older. I think he lies. <laughs> what are you going to do? He goes, I'm, I'm going to be a life coach. And every time he tells me it, sometimes I forget he's going to be a life coach. And then he tells me it like at a rest stop. And I have to get out to laugh. I have to get out of the car. <laughs> I'm like Lupe, the fat chick. <laughs> There's not enough room for me to phys- I have to get out of the car to laugh. <laughs> and it's not just Tim. Anyone who's going to be a life coach. So then I break it down. And he gets really mad at this. But I'm trying to help him. I go, okay, you're going to be a life coach. How, how, many, how long do you have to go to school for that? He goes, well, you know, it's a couple of years. And you get, I get like a diploma. I'm like, yeah, all right. License and stuff? He goes, yeah. I go, is it psychology? No. <laughs> so you're coaching me through life. Yeah. I go, who? Well, use these people that are not doing well in an area. And, uh, and I coach them. <laughs> <laughs> then I have to get out of the car again and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I go, okay, let's break it down. I, say, take me, for instance. Well, you'd have to ask, tell me something that's bothering you. I go, okay, uh, I'm, I eat bad. Like what? Like what? I'll, I'll have to look at it and think about it and tell you how to correct it. <laughs> I go, okay, like uh, what if I told you before bed every night I eat a stick of butter? What would you say to me? I'd say, first of all, <laughs> you'd have to stop doing that. <laughs> okay, so what you're saying is 
uh, you, 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 so in other words, because of your schooling, you laser focused on what's wrong. <laughs> because of your schooling, like a lot of people wouldn't see that the butter is the wrong thing, right? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, no, a lot of people might not think, you know. So you're saying a normal person without a life coach degree wouldn't know <laughs> that eating a stick of butter is bad before bed? Do you eat the whole stick of butter? <laughs> yeah. An entire stick of butter. And then I go right to sleep. All right. I would tell you, you have to stop doing that. Okay. <laughs> and that would that be the whole session? Well, we'd, start, we'd have to talk about what it caused. <laughs> but what, what, what caused? The butter. Okay, well, I get fat. That's what happens. <laughs> okay. So you get thin if you stop eating. Well, I get thinner, I assume. If I cut out a stick of butter... Okay, so I'd have to get thinner. So right there, I helped you get thinner. That's the whole session, or would, would you come to that conclusion over several sessions? <laughs> How many sessions would it take? So wait a minute. Would you tell me to stop eating the butter on the first session, or is that jumping too far? <laughs> In other words, like, is that too radical? He needs to ease you into it. Right. <laughs> no, you, you're right. I probably wouldn't shock you <laughs> with the butter news. So... We got to the point where, like, it would take four sessions to cut out the butter and decide that what is going to happen positive is I get, th I get thinner. <laughs> and that's his life coaching. <laughs> four sessions. I go, what do you charge for that? How much? To tell me not to eat a stick of butter before bed. And then realize that the result is I'm getting thinner. And he said, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Like $180. <laughs> per session? No. For, for all the oh. Time. I said, Tim, so, all right. <laughs> okay, so now you're done with that. Now, how do you avoid being suicidal? <laughs> <laughs> Tim, what the fuck are you talking about? Who is going to pay you to do anything? Who is going to pay you to do anything? What is the competition on that? <laughs> Can I price it? If I get someone who does it for 175 <laughs> What are, you, what are you telling me? What is a life coach? You're going to die broke. Unless, unless I just give you money. During one of the shows, a woman that worked for the club was asking him because he was promoting his life coach thing and he gave her Yeah, well, a card. he's supposed to be helping me. <clears throat> yeah. He has a card? He has a card. What does it say? I, you know what? I, I don't know. I, I have to it. immediately see the card. <laughs> So, he has a card that says Tim Sullivan Life Coach? He had some type of thing. He gave her a card. Oh, we have to. Oh, come on. And, we have uh, to see <laughs> she, So she was asking about it. And so who? The, the woman that was at the club. And she said, so will you have some type of medical. You mean the manager of the place? Uh, she might have been like a, a PR woman. She was a PR woman. Puerto Rican? <laughs> <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, Damn. I thought you were a liberal. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Dan. Just say Puerto Rican American. God, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. <laughs> so she said. <laughs> what? She said, uh, so when you're done with school, will you have any type of medical designation? He goes, no, no, you, I can. I, and he was very adamant about it. And she said, well, oh, what no, kind he of. He can't call himself a doctor. Yeah, but he can't even say that he's been accredited. He goes, because What's he could. What's accredited? What do you mean? Like. Uh, he went to school? <laughs> he, he can't say that he's in the medical life coaching thing. He's not even in... Well, I'm not into that whole accrediting. Is there a medical <laughs> life coaching thing? Yeah, there's something... Well, how long you got to go to school for that? <laughs> Probably four or five years. Well, he went to four years of college, and quite frankly... But he's only taking one class a semester. Right, okay, but I'm saying, right, he'll be 72. <laughs> well, no, that's what I mean. He needs a life coach. <laughs> it would be like... I'm trying to think what it's like. <laughs> It would be like if Mel Gibson were like, you know, g g head of the Anti-Defamation League. <laughs> it, it, the, the, you know, I don't, I don't understand what he's going to do with himself. I just, like he's basically he's inheriting money like everybody else. Everybody's getting money. I, I give money. This is unbelievable. <laughs> like a game plan my old man had. Oh, gee, he didn't plan no, no kidding. Uh, yeah, it's just very disconcerting because I can't. He thinks I'm a, a loser, 
And what happens is he sees my checks after the gigs. He sees the stupid shit I do on stage. I act like a retard. And then he has to get the check. I make him get the check. <laughs> and, uh, you know, look at the Borgata. I put the Borgata recently. I get 50 grand. I get 50 grand for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I love it. I love it. And I just got a clean bill of health from a doctor. <clears throat> Fuck off and die. Do you remember the like the third or fourth week I met you coming back from the regatta? Just you, me and you. No. You faked the heart attack right. in the car, and you no, said, "Oh, I guess car. Dan, just reach in my pocket. There's something in there. I just I, I, I'm not feeling well. I'm not feeling well." And you just pull it out, pull it out, and I pull out the check. Oh, you. Go, oh, it's the pressure of spending fifty thousand dollar check at the regatta. I'm like you. Asshole. I never said that. you did too. You make shit up. Like, we were I, driving back. Yeah, and that never happened. Yeah, we were the, like the third or fourth week I met you that Borgata show. That was because you Kevin just, Hart. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you just make shit up. That never happened. <laughs> it happened. I would never make a dumb. You start joke to though. swerve the car a little bit. I don't know. You, oh, Dan, I'm not feeling well. Dan, I'm not feeling. Well. I want. I want my fans to realize. <laughs> I want to do a, a survey. Would oh. I ever do something that? Yes. Funny? You faked the heart attack when I was at the movies. Yeah, no, that was funny. That was April Fool's Day. I got you to leave. A, I'm sorry, I got you to leave that big. What's that guy's name? Sean Williams. The Goon. <laughs> that was the name of the movie. It was about a hockey player. Oh, the go oh, the, oh, I thought you said the oh, the Goon. <laughs> Did you say, oh. you said the Gook? No, 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 no. I thought you said I thought it was about Obama. <laughs> oh God. Uh. Yeah. No. I. I. Uh, I. I I, 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 again, he sees. I, I just love it. I love it. I mean, I, 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 I admit, I'm overpaid. <laughs> I'm overpaid for what I do. And uh, Dan can't stand it. Yeah. And uh, I know he can't. <laughs> Dan's a very efficient guy. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, I'm uh, just so proud you have a clean shirt that I laundered well, on that's stage. What I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that is, for some reason, God <laughs> put me on that register. <laughs> You know, and uh, my last assistant, Teddy, his head almost exploded. <laughs> T Teddy got so j jealous and resentful because the shit I would make him do was, well, uh, some actually some were felonies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put it this way. I can only get so many prescriptions of cough medicine with Cody to my name. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, uh, but when I got Tim as a... Because that's Teddy used to get. I used to ask him to get prescriptions. Uh, what what year? What how much? What six years? Is, uh, what what's the statute of limitations on? Oh, on uh, prescription fraud. I don't know. I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> yeah. is a long, long time. Ago. Yeah, yeah, he's fine. <laughs> I you know the opiate. Sometimes I would get uh, cough medicine with codeine. It's called Tussianex. I was oh, addicted. God. I would gallons of it, gallons of it, and the the, the constipation. I can't even tell you. I blew out an O-ring in St. Louis. Oh, God. Because uh, it's that cough syrup and it's the opiates. It is just really like, whoa. Really, really constipated. You know that box of shit on the TV commercial? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I needed that. <laughs> it's really gotten a far the medication. You never tried a laxative or anything? Uh, Yeah, you know. Well, sausage and peppers. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and, and so I would have Ted, for extra money, Ted would do it, you know. <laughs> he would go, all right, I can't do it. I'm not going to nail you. 50 bucks, okay. <laughs> I'll go give you an extra grand. That's how much. The money was flowing. The money was flowing. I, I, I would get, like, some, I remember one time in San Francisco, I played the Masonic Hall, 3,500 people. I got 100 grand for the night, 30 in cash. Oh. And I just gave Teddy. I said, "Teddy, here's eight grand. Just go get me a bunch of illegal shit." <laughs> <laughs> now you have to get cough medicine in his name, and uh, you know, and he would go, "Don't have a heart attack, man." And, you know, well, why? You don't care about me. You care about him. He goes, "No, really. I be I feel terrible." <laughs> I would oversleep for eight p.m. gigs. I would get a whore. We go to we go to uh, the Vegas whores first of all. The, the, there was so much hot pussy. Like for five hundred bucks, you got a young Carmen Electra. It was like your own private Pam Anderson. Five hundred on Super Bowl weekend because all the competition. 
they all flew in and the, the whores would bitch to me. Uh, it's really lame this week. And all these girls come in from us. Shut up. <laughs> this chick took her clothes off and got into the tub. And I didn't realize she was just washing herself. She didn't want me in the tub. But I, I, I read those signs and I said, she wants me in the tub. So she puts her like all her clothes, her bedazzled clothes for the weekend, right on the side of the tub. I get in, all the water goes out of the tub <laughs> onto her clothes. <laughs> she wanted to kill me. <laughs> and she had a pimp who was not white <laughs> who wanted to kill me. That's what I learned. That's no bullshit. The pimps get all the money. I would yell at these girls. I go, wait a minute, what kind of a business? What kind of a business model is that? <laughs> You need a life coach. Well, I said, do you know Tim Sullivan? <laughs> I should say, Tim, what would you do? He goes, well, because of my training, because of my training, I would laser focus on the problem. That's a term he uses, laser focus. He goes, because of my training, I would laser focus on the fact that she gives the pimp all the money. And then tell her to tell the pimp politely, we should work out as like, like 70, 30 or something. And then what if the pimp kills her? <laughs> now, what if she comes back to you and says, I told my pimp that, yeah, and he lit me on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and he poured Drano down my throat. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Let me laser focus. I'm laser focusing on the Drano and the fact that he, you're saying he ignited you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of your advice, he threw an oily rag on me <laughs> and lit it. I have third degree burns over 85% of my body. Okay, let me laser focus. So wait a minute. Let's look at the positive. 13% of you is not burned. <laughs> every day when you get up, listen to me. Every day for the rest of your life when you get up, don't concentrate on the 87% of you that's burned. You concentrate on that 13%. That's not burned. And use a natural aloe on the burns. <laughs> right. Now I'm going to give you some cream. <laughs> now, I can't write a prescription, but Artie's new assistant, old assistant, Teddy. I think Teddy actually became a pharmacist after all. <laughs> no, Tim sen sends them all to the, everybody who asks him a question to the homeopathic store. The homeopathic? <laughs> what does he do? To the, to the uh, natural uh, cures. Well, it's hard. Uh, Tim's a very short person. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to see. He doesn't do this in front of you. He waits till you leave the room because he knows he's going to take crap for it. Yeah. Listen, you need uh, Vita B C Beta. You That's do? A, no, not me. But he's who needs it? Whoever he's talking to at the time. Every show he gets into a discussion about CrossFit with somebody, and at the last show, he the the security guard that was outside the door that was guarding your car. He, they, he and a couple of cops, Timmy was talking to a couple of cops, and the second, he knocked on the door, and I was afraid that you would hear it on stage. The last show, remember how close the door was to the back? I thought you were going to hear it. I walk that? outside, I go, uh, what, Tim, why did you knock on the door? He goes, hey, all these guys do CrossFit, I just wanted to tell you. And I closed the door and went back in, because you were right there, the stage was right there. Listen to how mad Dan gets at other people in my life. <laughs> He's so mad at Tim for being in my life. He should be watching the show. What if somebody rushes well, the stage? Why don't you tell me? What if somebody rushes the stage? They're not right. They're all on angel dust. <laughs> <laughs> they, would go the, they would go the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> and then they would need a life coach. <laughs> Boy, the, the, the crowd in Newton needed a life coach. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about Levy? <laughs> oh, God, if anyone needs a life coach. <laughs> I, I won't say, I, look, Bob's a friend, so I won't say, I okay, Bob Levy's a friend, so I won't share, I won't tell you exactly what his text has been saying lately. <laughs> He's been texting me a lot lately, and I'm just saying this, uh, the, the end's near. <laughs> oh, God. Let me just say this, I'll just say <laughs> Minnesota slash militia. <laughs> Listen, we've got to fight him. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Listen, I'm putting a suicide vest on Dominic right now. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> and he's got a backup in his guitar. <laughs> What's a suicide vest about? What do you show him? Your family history? <laughs> Listen. Listen, uh, my son has flip flops on. It's two degrees out. Listen. You can't afford socks? <laughs> no, listen. 
He likes the look. <laughs> Has he ever worn socks? Listen. <laughs> 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 Listen, I want to do it. I need money. Can I do a gig with you? Well, I, I have somebody else on it. He goes, I don't, I don't, I don't want you don't have to pay me money. <laughs> no. Well, then what are you going to, I don't understand. What are you going to do? <laughs> he goes, I just want to be with you. <laughs> I'm worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> He's worried about me. That's exactly what he said. That's a move a lot of people have. Like, <laughs> you know, they, they immediately turn around on me. And I'm an easy target yeah. because there's a lot wrong with my life. The, fl- the, the I mean, I am a flawed human being. I mean, if you started, we all are. No, nah, yeah. Well, listen, listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. You flawed. Listen. Uh, but I keep it together because I'm lucky that the, the money I made. It's all about money. First of all, listen, listen. <laughs> anybody, you kids out there, anybody telling you money isn't everything, tell them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> I caught some fucking fruit and air do well scumbag after school special do gooder. Telling my 12-year-old boy that he, he, money isn't everything. I would fucking punch him in the face. <laughs> money is everything in life. Everything. It's happiness. It's the only currency that that's anyone right. cares about. Well, no, that's not true. <laughs> I've told some women. I, I, I've said the rudest thing I ever said to a woman. I said uh, I was uh, leaving a city and she wasn't leaving with me. <laughs> the city was far away. And uh, <laughs> this is something a life coach would not say to him. And she said, what am I supposed to do? I don't have any money. I said, That's, uh, I said, you have uh, possibly the world's most valuable currency between your legs. <laughs> oh, you have my permission to use it. Uh, I'm, trying to th- I'm trying to describe the face she made. <laughs> it was like George Bush, when he first heard about 9-11 in that school, that's when, that, when he's teaching, that's telling those kids. <laughs> when he hears about the second plane. <laughs> <laughs> that's the look she gave me. She said, what? <laughs> I said, uh, you have, uh, I'm not giving you any money like I do all the time, but you have the world's most valuable currency in, in between your legs. And by the way, she did. I said, you have my permission to use it <laughs> and uh, she looked like George Bush looked <laughs> after he was told about the second plane <laughs> while reading a book called Baby Gorilla not, what, what, what was the book oh was something the goat or, yeah, or, yeah, Jim, yeah Jimmy the goat <laughs> Jimmy had the gout <laughs> that's the look she had on her face <laughs> and that's that's the second to worst thing I said to her was particularly oh uh, the, the worst thing i ever said to her is worse than what i just said i know what it is yeah you, you know yes yes right i don't know i can, i'm not gonna tell you exactly <laughs> what it is <laughs> oh, i know what it is. i'm not gonna tell you exactly what it is let's just say i'm not gonna tell you exactly what it is. <laughs> let's just say i'm not gonna tell you what it is i'm not gonna tell you what it is let's just say if my doorman was up here i wouldn't tell you <laughs> <laughs> It was terrible. And my, to me, it was my life coach at the time. <laughs> and he laser focused. Uh, he laser focused because of his training <laughs> on what I said wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I said your, your most valuable currency is between your legs. You have permission to use it. And she, <laughs> she didn't come home for four days. I guess she went on a spending spree. <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's funny <laughs> a spending spree <laughs> <laughs> anyway well Danny told me a great story Danny used to work with an 800 pound uh, uh, DJ Susie Schwartz what was her name <laughs> can we take hey. a break oh sure Ready? I'm, I'm giving you life coach advice. Uh, are we on? Yes. Do you want to look at the thing? I, ju- oh, I just did. Okay. Uh, you want to look at it again? <laughs> All right. It would be a sad day if this genius conversation was not yeah, well, recorded. Listen, you're the one who let it go a few times. <laughs> Several times. There are, a couple of great, there are a couple of great things never aired. 
That's Michael, why Michael Strahan. That's remember why. Remember that Michael Strahan interview I did? In the wind. That's because of your incompetence. That's why you double check. I was competent that day and <laughs> did my job. You, of course, were not. You want to look at the thing? Again? <laughs> uh, you want to look at your smartphone? <laughs> that is generation smartphones. Only generation not as smart as their phones. Think about that. On hey. Monday, my dad, my, my sister called me and said, I need 30 minutes with you. We're going to three-way call, and you're going to teach dad how to use this because he had a new smartphone, and he got an email. Yeah. So I sent an email. I sent a text. I could hear that he received them. Right. He couldn't push the thing to uh, open the email. He threw out the phone. Right. I heard, I heard a thump, and then the phone hung up, and Susie called me back and said, uh, he threw out the phone. He's not going to use it. He's going to go back to us to the phone. Man. <laughs> See, that's why. That's why. I'm not saying you're gay, but if you were, oh, that's why. You just told me a story. Your mother want, would take you to see The Sound of Music, and your father wanted you to go no, see. No, that's not what I said. Alfie, where he fucks a lot of pussy. My dad would take me to R, and sometimes R. Uh, what was the other? P, it wasn't X. There was something above R when we were kids. Gay. And he would take me to. NC-17, like something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Those kind of movies, too. Right. Well, I'm saying, no, your mother was domineering in the sense that she didn't want you to go see the, the Alfie because it, it was heterosexual. <laughs> but Sound of the Music, she wanted, wanted you to say, And that's why you love musical. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's not a learned behavior, homosexuality, <laughs> which is why they have to get everything they want. <laughs> Honestly, if you deny a gay person anything, it's, you're, you're being, it's like anti-black, anti-white, they're born gay, so you're, you, God made them. So you, they get everything. Marriage, everything, because anything else would be really a human rights violation. The only, the only and again, people think, uh, you know, my gruffness. I am not, I don't have any, any racist poet in my body. And if I did it because Bob Levy fucked me. <laughs> no. Which is a joke Bob uh, wrote. Written by Bob Levy. Right, in 1911. <laughs> we have to say that. In 1911. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you know again the only thing I sort of understood was the Japanese internment camps and I'll tell you why no. of course I'm kidding <laughs> well Pearl Harbor isn't it? <laughs> George Decay from uh, Mr. Sulu you know, I, I, I love the guy we became very good friends he hasn't called me since my rehab <laughs> but uh, you know on the show we, became very, we socialized a bit and he was in an internment camp he was in a Japanese internment camp when he was a kid. And, uh, you know, he said uh, on the surface, the government knew what they were doing. They made it look sort of all right. But, uh, you know, crazy shit was going on. And clearly he got fucked by a guy. Oh. <laughs> but he didn't mind, which is great. What a, that's when it's great. <laughs> that's when God has helped you. If you're a kid... And you're just realizing you're gay. And you happen to be in a situation like the kids were in sleepers. Or sleepers. Right? <laughs> oh, God. You know what I mean? Jesus. For the other kids, it's a living hell. For you, <laughs> it's like one of those sandals resorts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, For you, it's like, bring it on, honey. Bring it on, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> hey, Bacon, give me your sausage. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bacon, how about a side of sausage? <laughs> yes! On a line for three, good! <laughs> Nothing but the bottom of the net. That's fantastic. That's the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Why aren't we winning Emmys? <laughs> or potties? <laughs> and that's great. Yeah. And I did it. <laughs> Unreal. So, there, yeah. That's nice, though. You got good equipment. It's a lot of budget here for <laughs> the film set. Uh, 
Yeah, so, you know, it goes on and on. The film eventually gets to its climax. And I don't know what happens, but uh, I'm, you know, listening to some funny shit at the end. I won't tell you the jokes. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I, uh, I made it worth my while. I'm in a sanctuary city that I call Hoboken. <laughs> He's got me waiting in the lobby. I've been watching Godfather 2, man. Frankie Pantangeli. Holy shit. Two or the epic? Oh, the epic. Yeah, because... But I'm watching a lot of two, you know, the two versions. You know. There's a couple of great extra Frankie scenes in epic. Absolutely, yeah, I'm watching <laughs> the epic. You're right. I'm getting a couple of good ones. Bye, Tom. <laughs> I don't want to continue this family, Michael. <laughs> I had an abortion. Something unholy. Like our marriage. I don't want to bring another one of your sons into this world. Not with this Italian thing. <laughs> Boy, what a country being there. <laughs> Hello, Carlo. That's the best. Well, <laughs> Hello, Carlo. Real casual. Hello, Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, uh, That's an underrated line in the movie. What? It, the, not a lot of people do. That's such a great line. What line? Hello, Carlo. Well, first of all, you're doing an awful <laughs> impression of Michael Clemente. Are there people in your life who've been telling you you do it? That's <laughs> fun, like like the black guy and the because they're lying to you. It's like with Gary Delabate with the throwing out the first pitch. I, if I, I would have been such a good friend to him, if we had catch for two seconds, I would have said Gary to not throw out the first pitch. <laughs> okay. You risk hurting their feelings and going, no, don't. I'll, you know what? We're friends. I'll tackle you first. <laughs> it's like you, the same thing with you. Do not ever throw out a first pitch. <laughs> ever. Off. Oh, don't. I had to pitch to Mark Grace in the off season so he'd get ready for the All-Star Tour. That's one thing. That's one thing. I'm talking about on camera <laughs> when you, you know. I can make it the home plate. No, I can't that, throw that, a strike, that, but that, I can that, make it. Well, no, that's that's not good then. No, but I'm not talking about that. Where you make it doesn't matter where it goes. I'm talking about technique. I'm talking about looking like a guy when you throw it. Yeah. I look like a guy. No. Yeah, I do. You look dead. You don't. Yeah. You look like uh, Tuesday Well. <laughs> I you you throw like you jaywalk. <laughs> Honestly, every Kardashian girl is manlier. <laughs> you, 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 uh, I don't know, you throw like that chick thing. And you use all of your... I do not throw like a chick. Yes, you do. And no, you use I all of your hips. And your hips are very effeminate <laughs> and flimsy. And you see it all jiggling around. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, my God. When you run across the street, it is like watching Rhoda. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beginning of Mary Tyler Moore, the opening yeah. credits. You do everything but throw your hat up, but you won't do that because you're bald. <laughs> uh, I would, t I would be such a good friend to you. I would go, don't, don't play any practice, don't do anything. Yeah, okay. What you don't like that? Well, maybe you'll get me back here. If uh, oh, the bear, oh, the bear, that's having fun of mountain range, or out on a hike or something. What sport are you good at? Hiking? <laughs> I'm, I'm being serious. I like to play basketball. I like to bike. Right. Oh, biking. You yeah. stick with biking. But th there's no way do you look oh my God, basketball. Jesus Christ. We played basketball and we tied. Yeah, again. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm at 30% speed. <laughs> yeah, okay. Dan, I was toying with you. Yeah, okay. All right. I have my life coach. <laughs> <laughs> I carried you. I carried yeah. you. Okay. I want our friendship to be good. I knew that was important to you. <laughs> I'm already doing much better in life. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, fucking food and stuff. I'm eating better food. <laughs> uh, you think we, you don't think I could beat you in basketball? I'm well, we've only played once and we tied. Yeah, but I, uh, okay. I don't even remember playing. What are you talking we about? We went to the gym. We played for an hour and a half. 
What gym? It was it was when the powers that be at uh, DirecTV said, listen, you got to start go working out with him. I go, what? 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 I go, are you kidding me, right? In no. between you getting me drugs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a lie, by the way. <laughs> well, anyway. But, you know, I, I'll let you. You want me to let you win again? <laughs> okay. What I have to do tonight, I am so. I have to go do, <laughs> you guys know Dave Juskin, right? You got me remember him from the show. And he was a great, great guy. Great guy. Uh, he's uh, Sarah Silverman's grounding for <laughs> Now, they, 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 uh, Juskin was a great guy. I just got a text from him. Yeah, what did it say? Hey, Dan, can the Artie Quitter tweet or Twitterer one of the tweets about tonight? has the kicker in it that's who we facebook through i have no clue what that means me neither hey dan can the article quitter tweet or tweeter one of the tweets about tonight that has the kicker in it question mark that's who we facebook through i don't know what you're talking about. I, neither do i I, here's what you have to tweet back <laughs> say dave never tweet me again <laughs> text me say, text me <laughs> say dave this is directly from Artie. <laughs> If you ever text me or Artie something about this project again, <laughs> just just consider Artie persona non grata. <laughs> just just uh, we're not friends anymore. But that means you won't be in his Godfather. Yeah, th th basically, I I go there. <laughs> you're the you're in the Dave Jeskow players. I'm the uh, yeah. I'm the only person. No, there's a, no, no, you're wrong. There's a Dave Jeskow player. <laughs> I'm the only one. He, 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 I, I basically, I thought I was committing to like ten minutes. I'm, 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 a, I'm on a fucking series. The jo I shot the whole Just Cow show. It was less work. He wants my football bills. I mean, you make them, Fruity. Just pick them. I go there every show. I'm gonna be blunt here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be blunt. This is the blunt show. This is the only blunt show. I'm, I, I, okay. Every time I've done two episodes, I committed to four episodes of this. What what are we talking about? <laughs> and then he goes, "Wow, it's sold out. It's packed." <laughs> and I go, "Yeah, it is." He goes, "Why do you think that is?" <laughs> I go, "Dave, can I just I just want to punch you in the face." <laughs> so uh, I said, "I don't know, probably Lenny Marcus." <laughs> <laughs> Did Lenny tweet it out to his eleven followers? <laughs> Lenny, very funny, by the way. And of course, Rachel Feinstein. And I think who else was on? A lot of very funny people. But uh, you know, I, 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 whatever. I thought we were going to do one show. To, I, I nodded my head like this. Like I, I might have even been from heroin. <laughs> oh God. So uh, by the way, I, I went to an auction on heroin once. I bought an eight hundred thousand dollar penny. Oh God. <laughs> I bought Cezanne's apples and pears. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. <laughs> I committed to four shows. Four. And he guilts you like crazy. What is the end game with Just Gow? He's 68 years old. <laughs> the worst hair dye I've ever seen. <laughs> and he, I think he works, works with a cane now. <laughs> Herman Cain. <laughs> Tim Cain. Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton was all she walked with a cane, too. <laughs> los Nosotros, <laughs> Los Manos, uh, Los Luzo Recounto, <laughs> Los Trumpo Bidaso Badlo, uh, Los Luzo Hispanicos, <laughs> even though I speak ho. <laughs> Uh, lost LBGT <laughs> community. -o. Yes. And then, well, he just puts O at the end of every sentence. <laughs> That's how he speaks Spanish, uh, Tim Kane. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, cookies O. <laughs> Pop Tart O. <laughs> Los PTO. Schoolo. <laughs> Los de Sochos has has manas. Los años Hillero Clinton. Uh, Presidente Clinto la blow jabo Fatchigo. Enormous o Fatchigo la pito. Gilberto push wheelchair. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> she uh, sit up oh, on toilet oh, <laughs> break oh. <laughs> Dr. O upset oh. Thank you. Here's your president elect. <laughs> Madam President elect, how many times did she feed? Oh my God. This is, oh God, she was so disappointed. Were you secretly disappointed? No, I was so mad about that Bernie Sanders shit. Yeah. Dan claims you voted for Bernie Sanders. I wrote him in. Yeah. And if you believe that, you believe he knows Bill Murray. <laughs> uh, Los. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I forget what I was on a tangent. So, so uh, basically, uh, tonight you're doing just go. Uh, tonight, I'm doing, oh yeah, that's what I was talking. <laughs> he, he's just uh, he gets very he's, he's pissy. <laughs> yes, he is. You know what I mean? And, and then I got I'll do anything for him, obviously. <laughs> but that's it. I got to mention on this podcast. Uh, wow. Well, yeah, I tried to call Dan, see if Artie, <laughs> it was a couple weeks ago. But, uh, you know, I sometimes you can't get a hold of Dan, too. Do you <laughs> get um, <laughs> so You get so excited that you're mentioned on that, clearly. <laughs> and the Jess Gow extravaganza? There's a piss you off that I don't care about. <laughs> I'm over it. I tell you, listen, Jess Gow is a very funny guy. He is. Yeah, he He's is. a good guy. Yep. Is he? <laughs> Uh, let me say this: Is that is that just God, baby, or just a brilliant disguise? <laughs> <laughs> I went to your football show <laughs> with Lenny Marcus as the slides played. Yeah. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> yep, you had a slide show. <laughs> Coming our way. I never saw an audience were bored. <laughs> At your pompous ass lines. They didn't know why they were there. People started to cry. <laughs> so when you invite me to your stupid football show, make sure I don't go and for Lotto go. <laughs> The lot of goes. <laughs> God have mercy on the man <laughs> who says yes to Jay just go. <laughs> <laughs> now Dave tried to pay me $20 in cash. He said it was my payment. I said that won't last. The parking cost me $52. <laughs> So I'm still down 32 bucks. Let me tell you, Dave, <laughs> doing a show for you sucks. <laughs> now there's another one in the cast. Some other shitty comic <laughs> that he met online at last. He gives me her credits. It always involves girl code. But I never hear of them. This show really blows. <laughs> so if you come tonight to see our football show, look real close and say, is that Artie or Dan Falato? What's the line that we could use for you better think hard and think twice? <laughs> yeah. That's right. So if Just Cow asks you to do something, you better think hard and think twice. <laughs> <laughs> and not be so nice. Oh, yeah. And you're too nice. <laughs> <laughs> so if the, uh, the, the, if he has to do, you better think hard and think twice. Because I guarantee you'd rather catch fucking lies. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll just say this. Dave just if you see him in an interview, he says his two best friends in the whole world are Sarah Silver <laughs> and David Tell. Guess who gets called for the shows for a favor? <laughs> Not them. You know, it won't be there tonight, Sarah Silver. <laughs> She'll be at an Emmy party in LA. Uh, David Tell will be writing jokes <laughs> and doing stand up. I'll be doing Dave Just show. <laughs> I wonder if. Uh, 
I guess I don't ground them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, just got tonight. <laughs> I guess I'm going. What's it? Four o'clock? Yeah. It's four o'clock. I mean, the, the last thing I want to do. <laughs> and I see. I I go to every show. I'm not kidding. I'm not trying to be a dick. Well, maybe a little. <laughs> I go to every show and he's bombing. He tells me to get there at six thirty. I rush because I try to be prompt. I rush and rush and rush. I get there six thirty on the button, and uh, the, the the producer goes, "Oh, Dave's got another thirty minutes." <laughs> of what? There's crickets. <laughs> I can hear my dick fucking receding like a turtle. <laughs> Waitress is not a looker. I'm like, what am I up to thirty minutes of what? <laughs> He's showing a slideshow. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. God, does he need a life coach? <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And it's of him tailgating. Oh yeah, yeah. Of Dad. NFL games he doesn't go to. Right, Dad, you have no idea. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. I mean, that, no, those are the exciting ones. <laughs> In the middle, I go. Oh, how that going That's my uh, my Lisa Bobbitt. <laughs> oh no. That was us at the Harry Potter exhibit in London yeah, that, that, last uh, month. They're there. Oh. They're there. <laughs> she isn't talking to Uncle Dave anymore, I heard. Why? What happened? I don't know. Something happened on the trip. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. He goes, You're uh, kidding me. No. I think she's mad at me. Uh, he, he, I got a call the other day. He, he, he wanted me to check if anyone else was mad at him. He goes, Does, you think Russ is still mad at me? Yes. I hope I can talk about That's this in the yes. podcast. <laughs> you think Russ is still mad at me for my comments in the podcast because he won't be in my Christmas Carol show? Dad, can I just correct you for something? Yeah. Nobody listens to the podcast. <laughs> you could talk about anything you want. <laughs> now, what did you say that was fruity again uh, yesterday? Uh, yeah, no, I mentioned that Ben Affleck is stiff. I watched some of the Batman versus Superman. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg, I'm not buying it. As Lex Luthor, I'm not buying it. Right, I mean, uh, th th that's yeah, not. I, yeah, I thought it was a stupid movie. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's all special effects, and you know. But Ben Affleck says uh, has a line where he just goes, "I'm moving to California." So he's leaving, and uh, and I know I say he's stiff. I say Affleck's a stiff actor, and Dan goes, "Well, this was around the time he got a divorce." <laughs> Uh, what the fuck? And then, like, it I had the creepy crawls. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> well, this other, I mean, what happened was acting. And how do you know that? How did you know that? I read it in Us Magazine. Wow. <laughs> wow. Lenny Mark, Us Magazine. <laughs> uh, I'll leave that to your conclusions. <laughs> Rachel Maddow. I finally watched that show to try to relate to Dan. <laughs> I don't watch that show. The show's unwatchable. <laughs> she cannot. She is so smug. She is so smug. You know what she's doing? And I try to realize, what is she doing? What's she getting away with? She's getting away with something. <laughs> she's doing the Janine Garofalo thing from the 90s. Because she's a dyke. She's a filthy dyke, right? She's a lesbian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, because she's a filthy dyke, uh, which is a sexual term. <laughs> she, uh, she, 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 everyone thinks she's smart. Now look, there are smart lesbians, of course. <laughs> there are dumb lesbians. There are smart fat guys who are Italian. <laughs> there are dumb. I'm um, hopefully the middle. Black smart. Dumb guy, black guys, Bl uh, smart Puerto Rican guys, dumb Puerto Rican. Everybody's a human being. It's dumb, smart, dumb, smart. Just because she is politically correct in every way, shape, or form, with the short hair and comfortable shoes, <laughs> it doesn't mean she's a genius. But everybody's pushing. We got to have somebody who's, a, you know, we got to make sure they think she's a genius because we want to push this whole thing. Hollywood wants to be, uh, you know. I talk myself out of a job. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying. So she does this thing. And she's smart. Doesn't make sure she's... You look at the thing yet? <laughs> <laughs> Try to do it. Try to don't... Don't be so pronounced with your head because I see it. You go like this. And I notice it out of my eye. Try to be more subtle with the way you look. Can you keep it in front of you? I, I, I can move it. I think the... Why don't you stare at it? <laughs> Instead of looking at me, do what you want to do. Stare at that. And then every once in a while, look at me so that thinks you're rude. <laughs> <laughs> Just stare at the clock and 
yeah, that's a better idea. <laughs> and everyone's wow, look at me. And that thing will go, what are you doing there? So she does this thing where Janine had a thing where she had no punchlines. No punchlines at all. And I've done this before. She would just have a premise. And then instead of saying a punchline because she wasn't capable of writing one, she would roll her eyes and look real like condescending and sarcastic. And that would get a giggle because whatever, like, you know, you giggles. And all of the fucking executives at like HBO thought she was brilliant. And this is literally what they would say. God, she's probably thinking something so funny. <laughs> And the other one, should we ask her what the funny thing is? We're paying her $2 million for a deal. No, don't insult her. She's clearly funnier than us. They gave her TV shows, movies, right. book deals. But the joke was on her. <laughs> the joke was on them. You know why? She wasn't a dyke. <laughs> they thought she was. She was just an ugly broad. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, But that, they felt sorry for her, too, there. Ugly broad and Uggs. That's she put. That's why they called it Uggs, because <laughs> you didn't grow off a little bit. <laughs> the full name is Ugly. <laughs> also, she, the the socks she wearing was unfunnies, unfuns. <laughs> she was unfunny and ugly, so she had uh, Uggs and unfuns, <laughs> and of course, dummy shirts, dum dums. Hello, dumb dumb. <laughs> Janine's a good actress, but just not funny. Everyone's a genius. So Rachel Maddow's doing that same thing. Every once in a while, she pauses. She'll show a picture of Pence, and uh, that's what she did. She shows a picture of Trump having dinner with Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney does not look like the brightest bulb in the fucking <laughs> tanning bed. I'll give you that. And Pence is creepy. <laughs> the way Pence looks at another human being when they're talking to each other is really creepy. Almost like, did you ever see the movie Tron? Or, or no, what I'm thinking of. What's the movie with Sting from the 80s? Which, is it Tron? Like, you know, where... Um, is it the desert? Where he's yes. In the desert? Yes. Oh. Whatever that movie is. Oh, God. The well, creepiest scene I ever. Look it up. Yeah, look it up. We got to look it up. The creepiest scene ever is... Dune. A, Dune. Dune. Good one. And I didn't yeah. look it up. No, I know. Okay, <laughs> calm down. Coon Dune. <laughs> so uh, the creepiest scene ever is in that movie. Do you know the guy, the, Ir the Irish guy with the red face? He's in Ragtime. He yes, fireman. yes. Okay, big, big Irish act. You know him. He's in Pope Grudge Village. Right. He plays uh, the retarded kid's father in yes. Pope Grudge the jeweler. Uh, he's a, a locksmith. And, locksmith. The, and the Pope. He's yes. a locksmith. Absolutely. He's a great character. Right? Yeah, he's awesome. He's in some Archie Bunkers. Yes. He usually plays a racist asshole. <laughs> uh, and a big, round Irish face. Uh, he was there a lot. And, uh, you know, uh, help me out of there, basically. Help, help pull me out of there. To a life of, you know, going to L.A. and... Uh, get on a TV show for a couple of years, get in the movies and making some money. It, it was uh, a nice thing. But, um, Dune, you were talking about Dune. Okay, there's a creepy guy. There's a scene where I guess the guy likes fucking young boys. You know, he, he hovers over the boy and he goes to the guy and he go, he, he, the, the guy gives him a boy as a gift. Yes, I could. And I he attacks the boy. That, yeah. He attacks the audience. Yes. Okay. The look he has on his face when he gets the boy, when someone gives a boy, he gets excited, <laughs> yes. is the look that Robbie always has. <laughs> I know that's a very specific thing, <laughs> but I'm like, what does he look like? <laughs> he has a look on his face like this, like he's always looking like, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, what's up? Like there was a flimsy uh, executive work for Fox. And he was the head of talent development when we were on Man TV. And me and David Harmon would like, laugh at the way he, talked he said one thing in particular was so funny the way he talked said where he lived and we would purposely ask him where he lived <laughs> we go uh, his name was spencer I said, where you live where do you live spencer? he goes her <laughs> and then he would pause he go i love it there her <laughs> <laughs> i love it there <laughs> Yeah, okay. You can, you can tell the look on his face. Mm -hmm. Like, he's saying, there's a lot of pastel. <laughs> a lot of the homes. A lot of the homes. A lot of the fences. 
are done in pastel colors. <laughs> I just love it there. And then we'd ask them every five minutes. <laughs> hey, Spence, where are you from? Hermosa. <laughs> I love it there. <laughs> Do you love it there? <laughs> All right. All right, I love it there. Five minutes later. Hey, Spence, yeah, yeah. Do you love where you live? <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. Where I, where I live, yeah. I love it. Where do you live? Hermosa. <laughs> <laughs> Hermosa Beach? Yeah. But like the, when you live there a while, you just say Hermosa. <laughs> Some people say HB. <laughs> I say Hermosa. <laughs> Who was your... Uh, what and then we would try to get him to the run. We do the Falado Gelato long before you. <laughs> I go, Spencer, yeah. what's your favorite alcoholic morning beverage? A mimosa. <laughs> 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 really? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love a mimosa. <laughs> where where do you go get it? Hermosa. <laughs> so what so what's your ideal what do you do on like a Saturday morning? I go to Hermosa. <laughs> I get a mimosa. <laughs> I love it there. <laughs> Great. Now, uh, who is your favorite uh, uh, home runner? Sammy Sosa. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, he lives in Hermosa. <laughs> Do you ever get a... Yeah, I get a mimosa. <laughs> so what's your idea in the morning? To wake up in Hermosa <laughs> and go get... A mimosa <laughs> with Sammy Sosa. <laughs> I love it. I love doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if anybody thinks that's funny. I love it. <laughs> I can't stop doing it. <laughs> hey, uh, did you see the new show, The Apprentice? Yeah. Who's your favorite contestant? <laughs> I'm a <host. laughs> Yeah, she's a big celebrity. So, uh, yeah, I was assigned to that show. I said, hey, Amorosa, guess where I live? Hermosa. Do you like Mimosa? Do you like Sammy Sosa? So what do you do? What's Now, what's a perfect Sunday? Well, I get up in Hermosa. I go get a Hermosa with Sammy Sosa and Amorosa. <laughs> I love it there. <laughs> That's just, I mean, come on. That's funny stuff. Is that funny stuff? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm trying to think of them. <laughs> That's an odd combination of letters at the end of a sentence. It is, right? Yeah, I'm, I was trying to think of Okay, I couldn't believe you came up with Sammy Sosa. That's the one I couldn't think Sammy of. Sammy Sosa. <laughs> right? Don't you love him? Don't you love Sammy Sosa? <laughs> he lives in Hermosa. Next to Amorosa. Did he have a Testarossa car? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, you know what I drive? <laughs> hey, Spencer, what do you... Yeah, so here's the thing. <laughs> here's what I like doing. <laughs> I like waking up in Hermosa, getting in my Testarossa, <laughs> and picking up Sammy Sosa, <laughs> and picking up Amorosa, <laughs> And going to get a mimosa. I love it there. <laughs> I try to park closer. <laughs> we don't like the walk, so it was Amorosa. She had heels on. So she said, can you park closer? I said, sure. So here's what happened. This Saturday, I, I woke up in Hermosa. I got in my Testarossa. I picked up Sammy Sosa. Then I picked up Hermosa, Amorosa. And then we went to get a mimosa. And I parked closer to the cafe. I love it there. <laughs> Everything else, I love it there. <laughs> Good one, Testa Rosa. Yes. I might have to get off the mic because if we continue to think of things in rhyme, <laughs> I know. I won't stop doing it. Anyway, yeah, so the look that guy spreads around his face when he would say, Hermosa, I love it there, that's the look that Rami always has. 
Think about it. Doesn't look like Mitt Romney. Yes. Going Hermosa. <laughs> Do you like Redondo? No. <laughs> Redondo's different. <laughs> then Manhattan Beach. Are, no, no, no. They don't have the pastels. <laughs> they don't have the pastels. Do you understand, Arnie? They don't have the pastels. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go now. All right. Can I go? Yeah. <laughs> sure. This really blows up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, here we go, right? D are you still riding with Anthony Bosa? <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I can't believe we didn't think of that. <laughs> okay, Artie, listen. Artie, I've written a book, too, with Anthony Bosa. So here's my favorite thing to do. Here's what I'm doing Saturday. I'm getting up on Hermosa. I'm riding with Anthony Bosa. <laughs> and then we're getting in my Testarossa. <laughs> Picking up Amorosa, <laughs> parking closer, <laughs> and getting a mimosa. <laughs> and I invited Anthony Bosa. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Bosa! <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, wait, I, I put Anthony too soon. Okay, I'll end with this. I'll end. This is the final thing. This is the look. This is what Mitt Romney's face reminds me of. <laughs> hey, Spencer, what are you doing Saturday? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm waking up in Herbosa. <laughs> and I'm getting in my Testarossa. <laughs> I'm picking up Sammy Sosa. <laughs> then we're getting Amorosa. <laughs> and then I'm parking closer <laughs> to get a mimosa. <laughs> and my waiter is Anthony Bosa. Oh. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what am I introducing? <laughs> you and right, Joe right, Mary Sicarelli. Oh, right, Joe Mary. So, uh, to, 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 I've been, uh, a lot of people are sending me so much great stuff on uh, Twitter. And I appreciate it. From, from tapes I didn't know existed, like the Trump thing. Uh, did we put that on here? Yes. Yeah, we, the Trump roast, uh, I didn't know existed. And you're sending me great shit. It's fun to see. And uh, something else you said that something I forgot about it. I, Joe was trying to pitch a show to a network called um, uh, Why Are You Funny? That, what, what's so funny? That, what's so funny? And he got into the minds of fucked up comics who had fucked up stories. And he thought it was funny. And me and Jimmy Norton uh, were two guys he tried to do it with. And uh, we, uh, we shot a pilot, basically. And you, have, uh, you do a 15-minute set. Interesting idea. You do a 15-minute set and then... Joe's cousin, who was a shrink, comes on stage with Joe, and on stage you analyze the set right after it happened <laughs> in front of an audience. Funny idea, and I think this came out good. And as you can see, this is from 2004. As you can see, I've been helping Joe for 20 years. <laughs> right? This is not the career I would have chosen. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's got a big nose. <laughs> uh... So yeah, so that that's what uh, that's what you're about to see. This is 2004 at Caroline's Comedy Club. God, oh God, <laughs> 13 years ago, 13 motherfucking years wow. ago. This is Sunday afternoon at four o'clock. Listen to this crowd. Sold it out in two minutes, <laughs> and it wasn't Joe and his shrink doing it. <laughs> Uh, and I uh, Did Jessica show slides? Right. <laughs> Joe Scal's hair was just going right. <laughs> And, uh, you know, this came out very good, by the way. If you want to see the video of this, Google uh, Artie and Joe Matarese doing stand-up at Caroline's. And it will be up on your Artie Lang YouTube page. And right, we're going to link it on YouTube. Uh, and and uh, Twitter and Right, Facebook. there you go. It'll be a link. Yeah, the video's good, too. <laughs> uh, my girlfriend, Dana, at the time is 10 feet off to the right of the stage, and she comes up a lot. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Old times. It's like that never even happened. <laughs> so enjoy that, and uh, enjoy this podcast, and we'll have more coming. We have fun doing the podcast. And you know why? Because we do it from her mouth. <laughs> I love it there. All right, welcome back to What's So Funny. We have our final guest here tonight. I think you're going to really enjoy him if you guys listen to the Howard Stern Show. You've seen him in many movies, old school. The Bachelor, give it up for Arnie Lane. Salud! 
motherfucker. <laughs> people, people want to know why this show's good for me, why I might need a shrink. Earlier, Pete announced that I wasn't drunk and 300 people booed. <laughs> On stage, a beautiful girl looks like an accountant or something. Him hands me a Jack and Water. Is like, I'm a man of the people. I'll drink the Jack and Water. Not like a Jack and Water before a shrink session. But I do. I, I think I need a shrink because I'm starting to get like some of my old Italian uncles. I'm starting to yell out that certain minority groups are taking over. You know, like. <laughs> Like, gay people have taken over, I think. They've taken over television, that's for goddamn sure. Like, the network Bravo, an entire, an entire network, you know what their new slogan, and this is true, their new slogan is, now we're twice as queer. <laughs> the fuck is going on, guys? <laughs> like, how do you get twice as queer? Like, just when you thought we couldn't fit another cock on screen, we shove one in there. Carson Cressley from Queer Eyes getting fucked in his mouth and his ass and they're all, wow, this couldn't get any more queer, you know? And then out of nowhere, two black cocks ear fuck him and you're like, holy shit! <laughs> this just got twice as queer. I think I'll put the Yankee twin game back on. Fuck it. <laughs> it's cool gay nowadays. I mean, you know, if you're not gay nowadays, you're a fucking homo. <laughs> I was actually on that show, Queer Eye. Anybody see me on Queer Eye for this guy? <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, that's the last time I mixed liquor and homosexuals. That's a... <laughs> but I, I learned something from being on that show. It's, it's hard being around five gay guys all day because you always feel like you have to adjust the conversation so they can relate to it, you know? You're with five gay guys and you go, yeah, so the other day I was playing football. I mean sucking dick. <laughs> I'm not into those shows and my friends say it's because I'm homophobic. Now, you know what? Maybe I am homophobic. I, I don't hate any group of people, but what is homophobia? Phobia, it's a fear of something. It means you're afraid. Now, if you say to me, Art, are you afraid of getting fucked in the ass? <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody, but I'd have to say yes. It might be my single biggest fucking fear. Getting fucked in the ass. I'm also afraid of heights. But I'd have to put getting fucked in the ass right up there with heights. They both have different things that scare the shit out of me. Like with heights, you're up high, you're looking down, you might fall. And with getting fucked in the ass, you got a cock in your asshole. suck. I don't know about you, Carolines, but this would be a shitty afternoon for me. Is if someone took me to the top of the Empire State Building. <laughs> and then fuck me in the ass. <laughs> that would kind of ruin my day. And fuck being gay, Strat. I just wish I was good looking, man. I wish I belonged to that good looking club you call on. Ah, me. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> good looking chicks rule the world. But now, on top of everything else, good looking chicks, they want our sympathy. They all go on talk shows like Jerry Springer and they say, I know I'm beautiful, but feel sorry for me. I got molested as a kid. My uncle fucked me. <laughs> you have lunch with a drop dead gorgeous chick and she goes, I know I'm gorgeous, but hey, my uncle fucked me. Take a look at me, honey. God fucked me. <laughs> I got fucked by a guy a little more powerful than your loser uncle. <laughs> now blow me. <laughs> and if you need air, yell uncle. <laughs> a 
it's Sunday afternoon, the Pope is dead. Let's get offensive. Come on, I love it. I'm trying to get good looking. Some of you want to get good looking, you got to lose weight. They said, you want to lose weight, go swimming. I've never been swimming before in my life. And that's because it's never been more than a half an hour since I last ate. <laughs> I used to be a lot thinner in the 80s, but that's back when I was <laughs> exercising. <laughs> Here's a piece of advice if you still do cocaine. Only do cocaine if you're good looking. It sucks doing cocaine when you're ugly. Because every time you do a line, you got to see your fucking face in the mirror. <laughs> you know, you're like, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> There's the whole reason I'm getting high in the first place. <laughs> My ugly, fucking, fat, fuck me face. <laughs> Shrink's got a lot of work today. Uh, I got a lot, I drink, I do drink a lot. If someone said to me, all right, what's a wild night of drinking? You look like you've had a few, and I have. A wild night of drinking to me is when you drink so much that eventually you pass out, and when you wake up, you're naked in a police car with two cops. <laughs> but the weird part is, you're driving. <laughs> Got a lot of vices I'm trying to work through. Over the years, I've also developed an enormous gambling problem. You're not in show business for 12 years and dressed like this without a bad gambling problem. I was making 35 grand a week on a sitcom. I'm wearing the same sweatshirt I wore at a Rush concert in 1981. money from gambling is because I like to bet on New York football cocksucker fucker fuck me in the ass Giants. The Giants haven't covered a goddamn game since the Reagan administration. And the Giants used to be, this will get into my psyche a little bit because you get an actual hatred for people that are involved when you lose bets, you know, like the Giants used to have this old guy who announced the games on the radio. He had like Alzheimer's disease and he was a drunk. His name was Jim Gordon. He always made mistakes on the fucking radio. So if you had a bet on the game, you didn't know what the fuck was going on. This is a true story. This guy, Jim Gordon, would say shit like this on the radio. You'd have a bet and he'd go, Sims drops back looking for a receiver. He's going way deep, long, long, way down for Baker, baby. Touchdown, Giants. No, he dropped it. <laughs> Mega takes the ball at his own 32. He breaks a tackle. He's across midfield, 45-40, 35-30. He's got one man to beat the kicker. He's by the kicker. He'll score! <laughs> no, he stepped out of the five! <laughs> one time, this was years ago, I had $500 to my name. So I put $1,000 on a giant <laughs> Sunday, Caroline. I'll fucking tell you what. Put double your net worth on a football game and then get drunk watching it. Beats the shit out of any New Year's Eve they'll ever fucking have. Yeah. So I got all this money on the game, and here's what this cocksucker says on the fucking fuck radio. Giants have the ball, fourth and goal from the one. Tillman, the lone setback. Hand off Tillman. Wait, no, I can't see it. <laughs> now word from Toyota. <laughs> but as horrible as the Giants are, the Jets are even fucking worse, man. Yeah. Got any Jet fans in there? Yeah. My uncle was a gambler, and he had a funny quote about the Jets. My uncle told me once, he goes, when he was a kid, he was into the Jets, and then he got older, and he got into girls. And then he got back into the Jets, and he said, the reason for that was, he realized there were times when a girl won't fuck you, but the Jets will always fuck you. Uh, what can I end with? What's a good story to end with right before um, I see a shrink? Um, <laughs> 
the big story. Uh, that's how, well, you know, I got a similar one. I got a similar one. I used to snort heroin, so I shit my pants a lot. <laughs> Do it at home. Don't do it in a car with your buddies, because that's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> Funny story about that. <laughs> Years ago, I go out with my friends. It's like a Tuesday night. We got all heroined up. Uh, we're my buddy 76 Nova. Two guys in the front, three in the back. I'm behind my buddy Anthony, who's driving. And halfway home, I go, dude, pull over. I got a shit. <laughs> he goes, fuck you. I go, Anthony. <laughs> It's already talking to you. I got a shit. <laughs> so he pulls over, I go into the woods to shit. And you know how when you're shitting in the woods? <laughs> and you're on heroin? <laughs> you know when you pull your pants down, it creates like a bridge right here? <laughs> A lot of you girls know this from getting fucked in cars. Oh, fuck off. What I did was I was so fucked up, I shit into my pants, pulled my pants up, I got back in the car. Which sort of defeated the whole purpose of going into the woods. I could have just done that in the car and tried not to tell anybody about it. <laughs> we get back in the car and we start driving and my buddy Pat goes, what the fuck stinks? And he says, oh, Artie shit his pants. And I go, no, I didn't. Then I felt the squish and I said, fuck, I must have shit into my pants. Because it wasn't the first time I had done it. <laughs> So they go, dude, listen, we can't take it. You gotta take your pants and underwear off and throw them on the side of the road. <laughs> so, I, sorry, ma'am. <laughs> so they pull over, I throw my pants and underwear on the side of the road, I get back in the car, but the problem is I still had like a shitty ass, you know? <laughs> and God forbid I get the Led Zeppelin Nova interior dirty. Huh? I got my ass propped up and finally they go, dude, look, you gotta walk home. <laughs> So I get out, I walk home. When I get home, I go to open my door. But of course my wallet and keys are in the fucking pants I left on the side of the road. So that night it was fucked up. I, I slept on the lawn. The next day I, I missed my SATs. I said to myself, how fucked up is this situation? Somewhere on the side of the road, there's a pair of pants with a huge chunk of shit in them. And the only other thing in them is my ID. Pop finds a pair of pants and goes, some loser shit his pants. Here's his name, picture, and address. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, they, they have the work cut out for them, so uh, I'm going to get off. That's my time. Thanks for coming out. We'll see what happens. Welcome back to What's So Funny. We're here with Artie Lang. Artie Lang. I'm in a shrink session with a Jack and Wolf. It's beautiful. There's no rules here. Yeah, I got you. Only gotta, you gotta get two of them, though. Right, yeah. I'll chug. Yeah, exactly, thank you. Thanks for not getting that, by the way. Mm -hmm. two of them. I was, uh, I, I, I work with you sometimes on the road. I was enjoying you because I said to you in the in the commercial break, this was the first set I've seen you without going fire when right. you came up. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, you, you got to give the fans in Cleveland what they want, otherwise they. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, fire has become a signature uh, piece for me. That's like my rose. I know. Like my I know. Fire! The beat keeps working for a living. <laughs> I'm curious, Artie. Right, listen, listening. Uh, <laughs> Listening to your set off stage, I'm curious about any relationships in your life and how they might be affected. 
by the alcohol, the gambling. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, I do. I have a, I have a great girlfriend. You'd be surprised. She's like, uh, she's a school teacher. She's really got it together. She's hot, and she, uh, she's, uh, she thinks, <laughs> she thinks I'm an alcoholic every day. <laughs> I think uh, I think she has some issues with my drinking. Absolutely. What in particular bothers her about it? Well, I mean, like, well, a good story to like when I'm on I'm on the road a lot, and when she's not with me on the road, there's this has happened at least three times. <laughs> I get back I get back to the shitty fucking hotel room, you know, and Joe can attest to that, you know, the, the Hawthorne Suites in Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, the manager of the club said he could get Percocet, but then he couldn't get Percocet, you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You're at a Denny's waiting for a kid with acne. It was like, you know, it says he's got a friend who can get Vicodin for you. And you end up just having a Denny's French slam breakfast and you go to bed. But I call my girlfriend up drunk and I'll ask her to marry me. But I won't remember doing it the next day. <laughs> That's so, romantic to right, do it over exactly. the phone. So the next day, uh, from the airport, I'll call her on my cell phone. She'll go, so do you remember proposing? And I go, oh, God, no. <laughs> and uh, she's like, uh, I-, I go, what did you say? <laughs> she goes, what do you think I said? It's the third fucking time you've done that. And I, she's, she said no every time. So I think the drinking is becoming a little bit of an issue. <laughs> Why do, you, why do you think it continues, Artie? I mean, obviously, you've had a lot of success in your career lately. Right? What? <laughs> yeah, what would, a, what would a completely sober Artie sound like? like? I don't know. Uh, I don't think I've been completely sober since I was about, like, I, I hit a double in Little League in 1978. <laughs> I, I, no, I, this gig I have now, a morning radio show. <laughs> you, can't, uh, you can't be drunk there, obviously. Although, right. when we go to Vegas, I get drunk. But, uh. but, Artie, Artie, I've never seen a, hu- a human being get more rewarded for being... <laughs> a loser. Drunk. I mean, how does it make you feel that these guys are, are supporting this behavior so much? Uh, it makes me worried for them and their family. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's like, uh, I think I'm going to be fine because I used to do the same thing to Kinnison and a bad example. (laughs) (laughs) See, when I'm dead in a year, just remember me, you motherfucker. (laughs) Oh, I'm curious, Matt, because you're you're, you're a psychologist and I'm I'm curious because I noticed that he will quit for the Howard Stern show he doesn't do it but the relationship doesn't get him to the point of I have to stop even though she's probably broken up with you how many times over it? <laughs> uh, I'm guessing five or six maybe five or six, five or six, five times. Or six times I mean like eh, it's just seven now <laughs> uh, no I mean but no, the Stern show hasn't got me to completely stop drinking one thing did I, when I was uh, like 20 years old I went to a doctor and he um he told me that I, I had to stop for like six months because I had liver enzyme problems. This was like in fucking 19... This was like when I was 24. <laughs> and uh, so I stopped for like six months. I went back and he said it was fine. And since then, I mean, 10 years of... <laughs> That's funny. I'm fine, yeah, you know. That's like I had a cholesterol problem, so I stopped eating cheese for like six months. Right. Lowered right. it a ton, and then they, it went down, and well, now I big, eat cheese. I, and I actually had a... I, it was a doctor in L.A. who had a, who had a sense of humor. Uh, like, everybody in L.A. seemed like they want to be in show business, so they, they try jokes out on you. And I, I used to drink a lot of tequila when I was in my 20s, and the doctor took an x-ray of my liver. And this, he really said this. The guy in L.A. told me my liver's wearing a sombrero. <laughs> and then, like, I didn't laugh, because I thought maybe that's an actual medical condition. <laughs> He's like sitting there waiting for the laugh. I got all these doctor waiting for a reaction from me to laugh, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, good one. Are, are, they, are there ever any moments when you seriously get scared about? Does your behavior actually scare you, or does it? Yes, ab- sure, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, well, well, there's nothing worse than waking up at a Holiday Inn in Cleveland and realizing that the night before you spoke publicly. <laughs> And you can't remember any of it. 
Like you had a microphone in front of people that paid to see you, and you can't remember what you said. So why do you think it keeps happening? All the things with Zane and all the things I, I don't at the know, clubs man. where you're waking I, I, up in the morning. Why do you think you continue? I, I don't know. Do maybe, you think that's, maybe that's something we should talk about when there's not 300 people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like to drink. I like being, you know, someone had a quote about drinking, like people who don't drink when they wake up in the morning, that's as good as they're going to feel all day. I like to feel better. I like being, I've always liked being, like the first time I got high, I'll never forget it. I was like, fucking, wow, this is great. This is better. Than yeah. And that's what happens. You get addicted to, to escaping shit, you mm -hmm. know? So, uh, so instead of like sit-ups, I would, you know. <laughs> What, what do you? I can't fucking win. No, you can't win, man. These what do you? <laughs> I was actually part of it. I was on the other side of an intervention once for a kid who was on steroids, and I, I didn't know how to. I said the one drug I've never done. I don't know how to react. To it. We were at a fucking intervention. We were waiting for the kid. Usually, when you're at an intervention, you're waiting for the kid to come back from a binge. He's at a casino on heroin. This kid was at a spin class. <laughs> So what am I, when he gets here, what am I going to say? He's a mess or something? Like, look at you. You're fucking, you're, look at you. You're a mess. You're getting too cut. You're too... <laughs> but Artie, you too said... tan. You, you said you're trying to escape something. I mean, here's a guy. You're a successful guy. You're, people listen to you all over the country every single day. What people want to know, what, what are you escaping from? It seems like you've got the life. I don't know, man. That's the problem. When I find that out, uh, I guess, uh, you know, <laughs> it'll be over. <laughs> No, I guess there's there's. Uh, yeah. Is no there ever any there downtime where you're ever like, you know what? I what the hell am I doing? Is there ever that, or you're just like, this is great. I'm never changing. Um, no, there's definitely downtime where like, you know. The... <laughs> See? Yeah. See, this may be preventing you, Artie. This is why it's always good to have 300 Howard Stern fans in a shrink session. <laughs> <laughs> It's unbelievable. It's a good idea for a show. <laughs> Actually, it is a funny idea for a show, but we're, we're the victims. Right. Me, me, Norton, and Vanessa will be leaping over the Varazano Bridge later. <laughs> you guys will get picked right. up for a Spike TV or something. Well, plus, I mean, what's it like being on Howard Stern, basically, besides Howard and... Uh, and uh, Strip. Robin, uh, everybody else is way fucking more fucked up than you. Right, I know, yeah. You get, well, that's the thing. You, you get no sympathy, and you're around, like, right, exactly. Like, there's people, like, you feel good about yourself. Beetlejuice. You guys know Jeff the Drunk Curl? That guy makes you feel great about it. Yeah. Uh, that guy just shows up. He makes, like, these noises at the end of a sentence where you're just going to throw up a lung. Like, just go... Show me where the subway is. <laughs> and he's my exact age. He's 37. Right. And he looks like, you know, he's 50, which is... So it makes me feel good about it. Beetlejuice? How do you not feel good about yourself? Exactly. <laughs> Does Dana have any insight into why you, you keep doing it? Uh, we've had some, some pretty deep conversations about it, but, uh, you know, she's a school teacher, so sometimes... Uh, we uh, grade papers uh, together. And, uh, I realize there's eighth graders that are way more together than me. But the funniest thing, you talk about people on the show, after last, the last Vegas trip we took, I got drunk and I passed out. And I, they, yeah, they took me up in a wheelchair and all this shit. And I got a, I got a voicemail. Uh, this comedian I work with a lot that you guys know, Bob Levy, he, he was with... He was with Beetlejuice on the road, and Beetlejuice saw me in Vegas, and Beetlejuice left me a voicemail and said, Hey, Artie, you're a mess. <laughs> so that's a wake-up call, I think. When a retarded... I'm curious. <laughs> Do you have any friends that you hang out like on a, a lot with that just like are kind of, you know, like straight-laced? Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. I got, I got buddies who were, you know, married. Kids. I'm 37. I got buddies who have 12-year-old kids, little league practice, the whole fucking... And they're just, they're not big drinkers or... Uh, no. No, absolutely not. So how, what happens, like, if you go hang out with them? Well, I'm able to turn it off a little bit, you know. I mean, well, you've seen me on the road, like, well, the last city we did was Dallas together. Right, right. And that's, like, you know, fucking Texas, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dana, they'll get you in a headlock. You were tame, though. I mean, you were yeah, pretty we, tame. Yeah, well, Dana was with me. <laughs> the drinking, the drinking cuts down when she's there because, uh, you know, I have to perform in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, this is your five seconds. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, even on your DVD, I noticed, which I thought was really unique, is at the beginning of your DV, DVD, it comes on and says, For Dana. Right. And immediately, you're, it's go, the music kicks in, the whiskey talking, and you're like, ah, fire! And you're just drinking Jack Daniels out of the bottle. And I'm like, you're pushing her away within three seconds on we your DVD. All, we all make compromises in life. <laughs> Do you think alcohol reduces uh, anxiety for you? Like when you're in... You're on stage oh, and social absolutely. situations. Oh, God, yeah. Do you think that's maybe a, a real reason why you go to it? It's sure, yeah. You know, I mean, again, it's like, you know, you, want, you get into comedy because you don't want to work for a living, you know? And then you're on stage, and it's like a big party. And, like, they're drinking. I don't fuck it. I'll just drink. I'm a drink. Let's drink. I don't give a shit. Um, I've gotten to the point where I could somewhat get through my act drunk, and at the end, you know, you're like fucking... I mean, I used to work construction. I was a longshoreman, and I couldn't drink there. <laughs> Although I did. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Ari. We're going to be so uh, we're gonna be right back with Ari Lang with some questions from the audience. Welcome back. Welcome back. What's so funny? We're here with Ari Lang. We got some questions from the audience for you. So my question is, do you think if you were to stop drinking, it would kill your creativity and you wouldn't be as funny if you stopped? Uh, I mean, look, uh, <laughs> me, me, uh, I'm realistic about life. Me in a wheelchair in Vegas shitting myself <laughs> is funnier than any joke I'm ever going to write. <laughs> But, uh, no, I mean, like, again, like, I always try to say, like, the four and a half hours on the Stern show, I'm not drunk, and I'm pretty creative there, so I, I think it'll be all right, but uh, I'm going to retire long before I stop drinking, so <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, thank you. Exact, buddy. Thank you very much. <laughs> What's up, Artie? What's up? Wah. Wah. <laughs> I created a fucking monster. With that shit. Uh, that's what's amazing about Artie. Before, before that, I just want to address that you're like the nicest, famous guy that I've ever met, ever. I mean, Artie, when I open for him, he'll pull me in the other room. What did they pay you? I'm like, they gave me this. He's like, you need more. And he just, I'm like, all right. You know, I can't say no. I gotta, I'm getting yeah, married in October. Hey, what the fuck? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to have it here. Uh, no, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and people There's come no up to you it. constantly, and they're like, I love the show. I listen. Wah, fire. And you're like, yeah, man. You know, <laughs> you don't ever punch anyone right in the fucking face. Right, well, it's going to suck when I get cancer eventually. <laughs> Why I got cancer? Why? Um, are you sometimes glad that you've actually done coke because it give you so much material? <laughs> well, it's weird. How can I say this without encouraging young kids to do coke? It's all right. Uh, you know what? No, I'm not glad I did coke. It did, it did, it did give me a couple of great stories, but uh, there's nothing. I was in rehab with a kid once who said a real profound thing about coke. He said the best part about cocaine is going to get it. Everything else sucks, man. <laughs> Running out of it is the most suicidal feeling, you know. It costs a lot of money. But like, yeah, if you're in, you know, if you're in Cincinnati and a kid knows someone who can get it, like that drive over is great, you know. But everything else blows. So I wish I never went through the rest of the shit. You know? Good answer. That's true. The afterwards is the worst. But before. I have to say, by the way, I love you. Thank I you. you. Every morning, you make me laugh. Uh, do you ever, <laughs> I'm like walking to work listening to my walk in, Walkman and laughing. People probably think I'm crazy, but anyway. <laughs> That's fine, thank you. Do you ever get sick of people hounding you for always drinking? Like, you're just having a good time. Do you ever get sick of that? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, some people get on their high horse. Some, there's a lot of self-righteous people out there who feel they've um, found out the meaning to life and they always want to tell you about it. Like, like the first time I went to AA, and I've gone several times, <laughs> um, you know, everybody told all these stories and I looked around the room and my observation was, God, a year ago, this would have been a fucking great party. <laughs> 
now it's just a bunch of self-righteous people telling me not to drink. Like, this one chick got up at an AA, and I'll, I'll end with this, but this one chick got up at an AA, in an AA meeting once. She said, you know, um, just six months ago, I would get really drunk and get on a table and take my top off and yell. What's wrong with that? And she goes, uh, I wish you people would stop drinking. And to my, under my breath, I'm like, geez, I wish it was six months ago. <laughs> Everybody's got, they, everybody's got to figure out life for themselves, yeah. you know. And when I do, we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it's not too late. Well, but. you're doing a great job. Thank now. you. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Artie Lang, everybody. Artie Lang, what are you plugging, man? You got any plugs? Uh, well, I have, a, I have a DVD out called It's the Whiskey Talk, and it's my stand-up. You